honestly, it's weird for me. Like that, like my association with you guys in this show is like synonymous with that yes, yeah. because yes. there's like, it's once a day at least. Like I'll be walking down the street and somebody's like, you got to do the home run derby, bro. <laughs> Big cat PFT. We got to get them to pay up. On today's part of my take, we have our good friend, Christian Yelich. Back on the show, a huge mistake by me and PFT for longtime listeners. They know that we have a bet that we will get into with Christian Yelich that we've had for about four or five years now. This was a mistake because we love Christian Yelich. We actually ran into him randomly on the side of the street. We're like, dude, come back on. Uh, but now everyone's going to talk about this again, and we have just resurfaced the bet. But great conversation with him about baseball, spring training, new rules, everything, getting kicked out of games. Awesome interview. We're going to talk a little weekend sports. We had an insane college basketball Saturday. Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury. LeBron, 23 most important games, is is going right now. Uh, and, of course, we got Who's Back of the Week. Great show for you. It's brought to you by our friends at Barstool Sportsbook. Barstool exclusives. Picks and parlays from Big Cat El Prez and other personalities to follow or fade. Tons of ways to bet. Daily odds boosts, live in-game bets, move the line plus teasers, and parlay plus to bet within same games or across sports. It's easy to navigate and use data and content to keep you informed, easy and secure registration, more ways to deposit and withdraw. So download today, use code TAKE to create an account, a $1,000 new player bonus if your first bet loses, get up to $1,000 in bonus cash, must be 21 plus, gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. March Madness is coming up. Conference Tourney Week is coming up. Download the Barstool Sportsbook app today. Download today and use code TAKE to create an account. And a $1,000 new player bonus. If your first bet loses, you get up to $1,000 in bonus cash. Must be 21 plus. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Get excited for March Madness and do it on the Barstool Sportsbook. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take. Today is Monday, February 27th, and boys, there was a lot of sports this weekend, a lot of things to discuss. I don't know where, choose your own adventure. Where would you like to start? Because I actually have a list of things we can discuss. Yeah. Why don't you say, okay. what, about, here, I'll number them real okay. quick. Uh, all right, say a number one through four. Seven. Seven. Okay, seven. Uh, bull riding. Okay, bull riding. Yeah, it was sick weekend for bull riding. The Canadian bulls yes. really showed yeah. out. It's like the opposite of the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Is right now Canadian bulls are dominating the PBA circuit. They're all the way back. It's, no. a, it's a PBA yeah. spelled E-H. Yes, yes, PBA. Uh, no, we had an awesome weekend of sports. I actually, why don't we start with the fact that Saturday in college basketball felt like a March Madness day. It Not was absolute chaos nine and, ranked teams lost on yeah, Saturday and the way they lost and I want to say a quick shout out to one of because I think the the when we when we talked to Titus last week and talking about how we miss coach K college sports obviously everyone has their teams wherever they went to school everything like that but a lot of college sports because the players change every single year is about the program and the coach and Saturday, I'm a big believer in the little signs and the butterfly effect. I think Saturday we got the chaos all because of Fran McCaffrey's stare, stare down. It was From a, that point on, the day just went off the fucking rail. There's nothing like a good old-fashioned coach just staring at a referee so close, and neither one of them was going to walk away. They both stepped up. Yeah. It was incredible. It was just so if you missed it, Iowa-Michigan State, Iowa was losing all game. Uh, Fran McCaffrey is a very angry coach. He's probably top three angriest coaches in, in college sports. Uh, he got into, it was in the middle of a timeout. He used, instead of coaching up his team, he decided to go walk and, and stare at the ref standing on the baseline with the ball. He started about 10 feet away from him, and he slowly got, they just didn't say a word. It was like Madison Bumgarner and, and Joe West. Didn't say a word to each other. A good solid 25 second stare down. Both of them stepped into it 
And then finally, Iowa coaches, assistant coaches were like, Fran, you're going to get kicked out of this game. And then... You can't get kicked out of a game for looking, though, for not, not using your words, for just staring. It was, the only way possible for a stare down like that to end with both sides saving face and neither side feeling like they lost is if they just continue to get closer and closer until they just kiss. Yeah, they had to kiss. They had, they to, had kiss to kiss and then break but, it up. But, and then, so the reason why I say that his stare down started the chaos, Michigan State was up 13 points. With a minute 31 left, and Iowa won the game by six in overtime. It was absolutely chaotic, an insane scene. And then we went on. We had Florida State down 25. They beat Miami on a buzzer beater, which was just a brutal, like the guy hits, Miami hits a, a three to go up two with like four seconds left. He's doing the like, are you not entertained? Florida State just inbounds the ball right back in his eye. Three buzzer beater. We had uh, Arizona State buzzer beater. That was Ar awesome. Awesome. Ari and it was pure from half court. And uh, that was Arizona was leading by 10 with 630 left. We had uh, Indiana swept Purdue for the first time in 10 years. We then, I stayed up all the way till I saw. Well, congrats to Purdue for yes. winning the Big Ten. Yes, on a loss. They won the Big Ten. Yes, it's they theirs. did. They did. That was at least a share, but um, as we say on this podcast, very, that's a win. That's yeah, it's a win. win. They that's won a win. The Big Ten. The um, and then we had late into the night, like it was like twelve thirty at night. I was watching on my phone in bed with my headphones in San Diego State buzzer beater to beat New Mexico, and uh, Rick Pitino Jr. Unfortunately, the pit was rocking, but that, it was just like it felt like one of those days where it really did feel like a, a tournament day, where it was just nonstop action. Every two hours, another crazy result happened, and it was a nice reminder on like when we're starting to get our feet wet with all the other sports. Oh yeah, college basketball fucking rules this time of year. Sometimes the sport just knows when they have the spotlight. Yeah, and this was the first weekend where truly college basketball could be like, okay, it's our season. Major League Baseball tried to upstage them with spring training games with the giant bases that they yep. have, and I'll be honest. The bases do look awesome yeah. on TV. Thank you, Rob Manfred, for listening. He's got his finger on the pulse of Seamhead Nation. Yep. The bases really do it for me, so good well, job on that one. And baseball has its own moment right now because they're just trying to figure out all the new rules, and it is absolutely chaos. We had a game end today in a tie because you can tie in spring training on a violation, a shot clock violation mm -hmm. for the hitter. Yeah, yeah, not stepping into the box. Uh, we had a couple of those this weekend, too. And the games are going way faster. It's like two hours, 20 minutes per game as opposed to like two hours, 50 minutes. It's chaotic. For old spring training games. Now, uh, I've got I've got my guy that drafts for me every year for the CMED Express. He's the guy that he was in a fantasy league that he used to dominate that ended up having two future actual baseball GMs. Okay. So this guy, Corky, knows his shit. He is projecting right now an average decrease in pitch velocity this year of 0.02 miles per hour Whoa. because of the new shot clock rules. So yeah. keep that in the back pocket. We're going to see slower fastballs this year. And also a lot more steals, too, I would assume, because of the rules, the pickoff rules. You can go, only go twice. And the bigger bases. You yeah, get and the bigger faster. bases. Um, yeah, we'll get into more of that with Christian Yelich. We also just shout out Keith Hernandez, who it's spring training for the announcers, too. Uh, he was calling a spring training game between the Mets and the Marlins and uh, Marlins player Jazz Chisholm. He introduced as Chaz Chisholm, <laughs> which that's fucking good, rules. That's, good. that's he, just a great name. Is, is this is he holding in right now, Keith Hernandez? Because I think that he had he had some uh, contract disputes, right? Like I don't know. Keith Hernandez yeah. was he was like, I'll go to a different team. I don't care. No, he just he consulted with his cat, who is I don't know if uh, this is knowing too much about Keith Hernandez. Which is just following him on online, but he he has a cat. He might have multiple cats, but I know he has a cat. And his house, he's set up like it's a it's like basically if Exhibit did a, a pimp my ride for a house for a cat. Yeah, like there's a bunch of like weird shelves. There's actually a an entire shelf that goes the length of his ceiling that the cat can just climb around and like walk. The cat just walks around. He's like a Walenda brother. I love it. Just walking around the house. I love it. Here's a take that I'm going to squat on. Keith Hernandez has toxoplasmosis from living with his cat. Oh. That's why he's messing up names. But, I mean, it, is it really a mess up? Because Chaz Jism is just a Hall of Fame name. It's a better name. Yeah, it's a way it, better it's name. It's a way better name. But yeah, a, it's, someone's got to have that porn star name. So, baseball tried to steal away the spotlight, but college basketball was incredible. Uh, UNC got their first quad one year. Yes. Or quad one win of the year. Yes. yes. Against UVA. Yes. So, UNC's back. You mentioned Rick Pitino Jr. Rick Pitino is sneaky 
still a great coach. Oh, yeah. Rick Pitino, his name is going to be mentioned in some bigger jobs that are going to open St. up. St. John's. Got to win the MAC tournament, though. That's all, all that the matters. Ma- the can, MAC. Can you please St. say it correctly? St. Yeah. John's? Yeah. Syracuse? There was, there was a push by St. John's fans. Maybe. To have Rick come and coach St. I mean, it would be great. The Red Storm once every, oh, 20, once every 28 days. Did you just fire Jim Beheim? No, oh, it doesn't have to oh, be this year. It doesn't oh, have to be this oh, year. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, when it, yeah. When the Got time it. comes. When the time comes. What Got about it. this? What about this? Because we talked with, with Mark Titus last week about how frustrating it is, the fact that Duke basketball is not hateable. Why don't we just get the Patino to Duke train going? Ooh. How nice would that be? That would be. Hanks, Hanks yes. looked up. He's ready to. Uh, to John Shire's a good guy. He, uh, great guy. Great yeah. guy. Great guy. It, is he winning basketball games? He, well, they did. They ki- they kicked the shit out of Virginia Tech. They're gonna make the tournament, yeah, in year one. Yeah, I'm just saying that's not Duke. They're supposed to be Duke, Jake. That's what you can always and say. Ca- oh, and speaking of speaking of uh, hot seats, Cal is off the hot seat. Yeah, Kentucky is hot. Yeah, they are. They they killed Auburn. Um. Oh, what about Patino to Ole Miss? Sure, yeah, they just fired their coach. Yeah, yeah. He loves Ole Miss. That'd be nice. He loves young misses too. Yeah. Got all the Patino puns out. <laughs> um, that was <laughs> BFT just emptied his college basketball clip with Patinos. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm excited about Patino getting a, a, a big job. I think yeah. that I think the time is right for him to get back. He's been laying low for long enough. The sport's better when Rick Patino is patrolling yeah. the sidelines in a major conference. He should just go back to Louisville. They're the worst team in the ACC. It would they make too much so sense. So god awful. Um, I actually saw a game in person: L- LIU versus Merrimack. Which it was very funny because I went to the game. There was, I'm there. The, you walked in for free, so I, I was like, "Oh, they didn't charge." No, I I was confused. Just walked in with my son, watched the whole game. After the game, let him run on the court, and then like all Merrimack staff was just like, "What the fuck are you doing here?" <laughs> and then one guy on Merrimack came up to me. He's like, "You know Ken Palm?" And I was like, "Yeah." He's like, we're actually the number one defense. Oh. No, Merrimack's the number one defense. Oh, LIU's 363 out of oh, yeah. 363. The, they've won three games <laughs> all year. So basketball. bad. So bad. But I, I guess Merrimack is the number one defense in terms of turnovers. Yeah. And so that's nice. Shout out Merrimack Hoops. There we go. He was like, it was just very funny that he pulled me aside and was like, you know, Ken Palm, number one in defensive turnovers. Hang the banner. Yeah. Like, that's. A subset stat. <laughs> I, I love that. I yeah. love that. I mean, if, but yeah, it was a great college yeah, basketball. If there. I if I was number one ranked anything, anything. in the world, you anything. better believe I'm pulling that stat up yeah. all the time. But college basketball was awesome this weekend. And uh, Caitlin uh, Clark, yeah, on the women's side. You see that buzzer beater? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. Man, that was a good one. Um, Rutgers, shout out Rutgers. Big comeback against Penn State. I bet on Penn State. That was unfortunate. Yeah, I guess I should do. I was going to be my who's back, but uh, I, Wisconsin just is. I I. It's been torturous to watch them this season. The Hunter Dickinson, the one guy you can't have who's been basically uh, being the heel all year, he hits a three when they should have fouled. I They tried to foul at half court at the possession before, but everyone's like they should have fouled. They should have fouled. Well, they should have fouled. Greg Gard said that he did give the call to foul no, on, on that possession. Yeah. I'm not talking about the yeah, – yeah. I know you, the one that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But also on the last possession – Greg Garg, he was telling his team to foul. I know. And apparently they were trying to, but they weren't fouling hard enough. It was a bad job of fouling. Yeah. And then Hunter Dickinson put the ski mask on. It was bad. Big buzzer. They beater. are one and one against the Badgers this year, so I don't – that was – he was like – he Hunter Dickinson put out an Instagram post being like, I stood by everything I'd say. So the the you, Badger killer. You went one and one. He's the Badger killer. Yeah, you went one and one, and it was two pretty tight games. But I – so I had a tweet after, and I just – here's what I don't understand. So, obviously, we wear our heart on our sleeves as sports fans. I am 38. I should be more mature than this, but I'm not. I'm being honest and being vulnerable. I absolutely let my team's success dictate my mood. I was very upset, grumpy, mad, uh, all those things. My question to you, PFT, is why can't I be a grumpy triggered bitch after my teams lose and everyone else can i think no. i should be able to be like i, I if anything people should be applauding the fact that i'm a grumpy triggered bitch after my teams lose because i could easily just remove myself and be like oh well i'm you know i i, I got a lot of things going on in my life i got uh, i'm successful i don't need to care about a bunch of 18 year olds 
uh, playing basketball on a Sunday. That's kind of your job. But I do. Well, no, but I, I would care. Even if it wasn't my job, I would, that would have ruined my day. So yeah, no the, matter what. The way I look at it, you'd rather, you'd rather care way too much than be completely numb to it. That's the danger that you live in if your teams are just consistently bad for a long time. So if you still feel pain, that actually means that you're, you're still expecting good results. It's once you stop with that expectation yeah. that you're just numb and you're used to it. And then you just lose all interest in sports. You don't want to get down that road. I also think that there's something to be said for having sports be your outlet as a guy to have to be able to get emotional about stuff. It's like it's it's a free space. It's a safe space for us to get triggered at, because if you uh, let those emotions seep into other parts of your life, then that's bad. But now you've got this one outlet well, where where you start stinking. They do, and, but but the reason why is yeah. because of sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no, they, what I'm they, saying. They, they send the whole day in a spiral. Yeah, I'm that's just saying, that's good. I like, think that's a good thing for you to have. All of our listeners, our lovely AWLs. I guarantee, when your team loses, you're a grumpy, triggered bitch online. Yeah, and in person. Let me have the same. Let us let us be the same. Let me lash out and be upset for a little bit because I was upset. The way they lost upset me. Yeah, it, it it's good. ruined my day. That, because like you can't. If they had just lost in a regular loss, I would have been able to deal with it. But not fouling up three with a second and a half left, that ruined my day. And it's Hunter Dickinson, who's yes. who's been he's been trying to jokerify himself this year. He's, Correct. He's been doing like a half-assed version of method acting, turning into Heath Ledger, but. This was actually like the Jokerish response. The that one he had. time it actually worked. It worked. For him. It yes. worked well. So, and they're going to lose to Illinois and Indiana, so they probably won't even make the tournament either. Yeah. Two bubble teams. It's just, I just, just afford me. Again, I think that people should applaud the fact that I still let a bunch of fucking kids, they're just kids, playing a basketball game on a Sunday afternoon, ruin my day and maybe my week. And possibly my week. Like, this one could have ruined my week. Yet to be seen how I wake up tomorrow morning. People should applaud that I still care when I could just be like, ah, oh, fuck it. Who cares? It's just a game. So just afford me the same right that you have to just be, you know what I mean? People, I know people, when they get upset, when they when their team loses, they just go and they argue with people online. It's a, it's an outlet that we all need. You know what you need? You need to get on that burner life. The burner life really changed I the like game to for just me. just do it myself. It's so fun to just to get anonymous and just reply to a major reporter's tweet or like a final score tweet, and nobody even knows that it's you. It's so good. Yeah. I just like to do it myself, though. I like to just be myself and let you know. I'm vulnerable. I bleed just like you. I'm I'm getting into a, a dark place, and the reason why I brought up the the being numb to things is because that's kind of a personal situation that I'm I'm anticipating going through very soon. Because you you experienced it with the Bears this year, even before the season started, no expectations whatsoever with the Bears. Um, I found myself in a place where the next year. I really don't have anything to look forward to dude, sports wise, dude. At all, I, well, we're the same. Yeah, I, no, 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 no. I I was thinking about this independent of you. I was thinking about how sad it is that the best thing that's happened to me in my sports life this year is that the Bears were the worst team. Yeah, that's literally the best thing that's happened. Yeah, the, well, the best thing that's happened to me in the last calendar year is the report that Dan Snyder was going to sell the team, which looks like it's not even going to happen now. Right. So i've I've got I've got the Nats. They're going to stink. The Caps are selling everything. They stink right now. I've got the Wizards, kind of, uh, but I'd never care about them. And then Dan Snyder sticking around. So I no, I, I'm a DC Defenders PFT. guy now. Two and zero. DC Defenders two and zero. First place in the East. PFT. XFL. We need to stick. We need to be like uh, like Boondock Saints when we're back to back, just fighting everyone because the Hanks of the world, these people the who winners. just come running around, or even the almost winners, the Maxes of the world, they can laugh in our face. I did the same calculation in my head. The Cubs might be frisky, but let's be honest, they're not going to like do anything. the 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 like biggest story for the Blackhawks has been. Just waiting for Patrick Kane to get to see what you can best get player Patrick ever. Kane, yeah, like yeah. The, the best American hockey player ever is. Oh, when is he going to get traded? Uh, the Bulls signed Pat Bev, who is a culture changer. But the peak now is to uh, make the playoffs and lose in the first round. That's the ceiling. Yeah. Uh, and then the Bears have the number one again. The best thing that has happened to me. The the, the Badgers are on the bubble and probably out. And the the best thing that's happened to me this entire year 
is that the Bears were the worst team in the NFL. Yeah, that's but, the that, best that, thing but, that, that's but that, to me. that is a very good thing, though. That's a very good thing. All right, wait. I, I, the best thing, I guess, um, I guess I'm just gonna have to be a full time Smash Golf Club. Jam you guy. three wins away. No, they can't play. Well, okay, yeah, so, they can. No, this is another they were D1. Of, I'm gonna blame this on Hank's misinformation because oh, that's you what told we me they couldn't. On. They moved no, conferences, Hank, but Hank they were still D1. Oh. It was Hank that said that because uh, he gets everything wrong in college basketball. <laughs> It was so JMU when they moved up into the Sun Belt in football, they had a one year postseason ban. When you change conferences in basketball, yeah, you can do that. You can still do that. So JMU they were in the uh, Colonial, yeah, 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 they can still win the Sun Belt. Oh, you tournament. gave me. I've been. I literally. I, know, I told I, like I fucked it up. I told like four hundred people. I that mean, Hank, this week, Hank fucked. I was up. walking around all week, yeah, just telling people that. So yeah. the four seed. Like, I look like such a fool. I know. Now. I know. I, I was like, hey, did you know JMU can't make it? I know. That's what everyone's been talking. <laughs> There's about. Ten teams ineligible in college basketball. <laughs> oh, Merrimack's one of them. Yeah, Merrimack. They, they is pointed one of them. that out to it's me. Four year the turnover rate's too high. <laughs> <a> four year <laughs> thing. Actually, defense. last year Bellerman <laughs> won the Ace Sun tournament and they couldn't go dancing. Oh, uh, that was a bullshit. Yeah. Another piece of Brandon Miller news also happened this weekend. Yeah. When he came out on the court for pregame introduction. His teammate patted him down when he stepped down on the court. Now, he has been doing that all year, and it's a pretty common pregame introduction thing where they pat you down like you're stepping into the octagon. But as Nate Oates said, not great optics. Yeah, and no, when you say bad optics, that's just a code word for being like, it was bad. It was bad. Nate, I, so Brandon Miller, like they again, they do it every time. I kind of figured that when I saw the like the intros, like this is probably planned. It's like a handshake, whatever. Uh, he's an 18 year old kid. This this portion, I'm not going to talk about the other stuff, but this portion, he probably didn't think twice. Like, oh, I probably should do. That. Nate Oates is a fucking douchebag because Nate Oates is like he said in the comments, he was like, yeah, I don't really watch the pregame. That's not what like part of what I'm doing. And then he realized, like, oh, shit, this is another situation where I'm doing a boys will be boys. Yes. And he shut it, shut it down in his own brain mid-sentence and was like, yeah, we'll stop doing that. It was bad. Like, Nate Oates, just have a little common sense for your team. You're coaching 18-year-old kids. You have to be the common sense. Yes, he is. The, he's the brain. He he's, is the adult in yes, the room. Yes, exactly. It's like if LeBron James got busted for distributing fentanyl, I would imagine that he would stop doing the chalk toss at yes. the scorer's table yes. pregame. Correct. But he's an adult. He's he's a father of three. Right. Brandon Miller. Yes, maybe. I'll, you know what? I'm just gonna say. I think Brandon Miller probably should have not done that. He shouldn't. Have, I think. I, again, I, I will say that Brandon Miller. Yes. Just because you're 18 years old, you should probably no. not not do the Agreed. the weapon pat down. Agreed. But. You also, Nate, I'm going to put a lot more blame on Nate Oates for all of this in terms of how he's dealt with it. I would say, yeah, in this he's circumstance. A bad guy. I would say 40% Brandon Miller's fault, 60% Nate Oates' fault. Yes, yes. Um, all right, so wait. Uh, when we talked about football there for a second, I had a thought that popped in my head talking about how bad our teams are. And I want to throw it out there as long as this is the trust tree. So maybe no one repeat what I'm about to say outside of these walls. I had a thought that popped in my head. It's a scary thought. It's something I don't want to happen, but I also have played it out in my head, and it would be kind of exciting. The Bears trade the number one pick. We all expect that. If they don't, they should just burn the whole franchise this down. This smoke screen. The Bears trade the number okay. one pick. The Bears also trade Justin Fields. And then you just get loaded. Then just loaded. have like eight first-round picks. And here's the reasoning. And again, I don't want you this to happen. I just feel this is the guy. I'm just saying this. You would become the Falcons. Your entire team would just I'm just be saying this. Picks. I'm just saying this because there is a theory out there when you're talking about, like, the Eagles, Jalen Hurts. They, the Eagles were able to load up because they were able to, to take advantage of a cheap contract with a quarterback. The Bears are in a weird situation where they have to get kind of good this year to see if Justin Fields really is that franchise quarterback. I think he is, but you have to – there still is some holes in this game. I'm fully uh, admitting that. So you have to get kind of good to get to that point. And then to get to that point, you would then be in year four and start running the clock on like now you're getting really good, but now you have to pay him a lot of money. What if they said we've wasted two years of this financial flexibility of a young quarterback? What if we just strip it all the way down? And get all the picks, and have all the cap. I and kill Williams Drake May is coming up. I would. And you do that again. I do not want this to happen. The thought came in my head because this is what we do as stupid sports fans, where you're just sitting on a Friday night and your brain is wandering. 
what you're watching a movie and you're thinking like, what if the Bears do this? That's literally what was happening. The problem with that is if you're the GM of the Bears and you hit that big reset, then it, it's then you you put yourself on a clock too. It's, it's like the craziest to, move. You no, have no, to it's start a cra- winning, so. it's a crazy move, but it also you could talk yourself into how crazy it is. It's you've been like watching. So, you've been watching draft day. It's so crazy. It might be smart. By this logic, are you basically saying that the quarterback position is like the running back position and it's almost interchangeable? Billy, that's what we've started. We started that take <laughs> yeah, like a month ago yeah. with Brock Purdy. Yeah. It's like you don't you yeah. don't even need a good quarterback to be good at quarterback. No, no, no. It's you still need a very good quarterback. <laughs> but the there is a like it it is pretty clear you either have a really great quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, like whatever Geno you want. Smith. Geno Smith. Tyler or Huntley, Pro you have a uh very good quarterback, so he doesn't have to be all world great, but a very good quarterback on a cheaper deal, and you can load up around him. But then you, then I would point you to recent history and look at teams that have won Super Bowls, yeah, and look at their quarterbacks. Patrick Mahomes, they're pretty good. Yeah, no, Tom they Brady, are. But Matt Stafford. But I would then point to you, Aaron Rodgers, and say teams that lost Super Bowls, they went through this, this model. Yeah, Joe no, Burrow, no, the, yeah. Jalen Hurts. Jimmy Garoppolo, I guess he was a little more expensive, but not as expensive. Yeah, no, it's actually it is a great <laughs> it's model. A great way to lose to, a Super to Bowl. get to a Super Bowl yeah. and lose to yeah. a better quarterback. Yeah, to lose a Super Bowl, but I, you, you wouldn't take losing a Super Bowl right now. Oh, I'd love to lose. I a Super would Bowl. love to lose that, a Super Bowl. If I lose a Super Bowl, that's that's dream <laughs> Actually, bad. I mean, you know, if you told me I could lose the next three Super Bowls, I'd be like, sign me up. Yeah, I mean, that's title I can town. Win, that means I can win three NFC Championship games. Yeah, that, holy that, fuck. That actually that would total up if you have if you have three seasons in a row losing Super Bowl. Yeah, it means that you have what, uh, eighteen months of pure joy in your yeah. life. Over the In- next three years? Including, depending on, like, if you get the buy or not, you have, like, I don't know, uh, like, seven to nine playoff wins? Yeah. The Bills had, they had no idea how good they had it in the late <laughs> 80s, early 90s. <laughs> they had it, they had some great football up there, some great yeah. home games in the playoffs. I mean, it is true. I mean, now they're 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 semi-back, but, like, it, it you win... <laughs> You wish you'd known, known it was the good old days when the good old days were happening. Yeah. There was a bleak oh, man. 25 years in there. Losing Super Bowls would be so fun right now. The Cowboys would kill to lose some oh, Super Bowls. Oh, my God. Jerry Jones would do anything. What do you say, Billy? Who's your quarterback then? Next year. It's a it's a total like reset of everything. Again, I don't want to do this. I think Justin Fields is very good. I think they should keep my, they, uh, my, my official stance is if the Bears don't trade the first-round pick, or the first pick overall for more picks, everyone should be fired. And I want to keep Justin Fields. Justin Fields also. Caleb we, Williams and Drake May are both we kinda, very, very good quarterback we, prospects. We glossed up over what a you little bit Justin when, when Justin Fields was on the show, but he did say he hates playing in cold weather. He wants to do And he wants to do Heights. Yeah. And he loves Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. What if you trade Justin Fields, keep the number one pick, no. and take Anthony Richardson? No, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> That's the point is don't do that. No, 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 no. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> no. That would be awesome. Why no. would you waste the pick? Go deeper. Max Duggan. <laughs> no. <laughs> fuck you saying? guys. <laughs> fuck you guys. No, it would be trading ju- just fields for multiple first-round picks, trading the first pick for multiple first-round picks, and then you have – basically I'm saying I want the process because I always have thought that as much as everyone made fun of the process – the process was fun because it gave a very clear strategy to the fans being like, here's the plan. Because that's what it happens a lot in sports is a team will tank and then like a team will tank and then the owner will be like, fuck this. I don't like this anymore. Like we have to start doing better. So then they sign a bunch of contracts that aren't very good and they get a l- marginally better. I liked being like, hey, we suck. We're going to suck. But Oh my God! Once we get to the promised land, it's going to be incredible. You that's, know what's funny is is we can process didn't work. We can we can argue. So that's <laughs> the thing is like we can talk about whether the process worked in Philadelphia, but I'm more of a process guy, so I'm actually going to take the side of the process of the process worked. Yes, the results of the process did not work. The picks because the process yeah. the process was in place. You just happened to take Ben Simmons and Markel Fultz right. with your first instead picks, of Jason Tatum instead of Jason Tatum, whereas. If you just appreciate the process of the process, it works. Yeah, no, but, he did everything that was planned. It's just yeah. the actual picks or the hard part. We're getting double processed on this. That's where it's like the, the, this move that I just 
talked about for the Bears would be very stupid because the the actual like plan of finding the players is the hard part. Getting the picks, anyone can get a bunch of picks. Mm-hmm. That's how the Celtics team was basically constructed. Yeah. They had like three years where we just had going into the draft. It was like we have fifteen draft picks, yeah. and then Danny would just trade them for other draft picks. Right, right. and you guys, and are then lo- eventually now and we're Danny here. Age it, even it, admitted that he thought. It was like it was actually kind of some luck because he didn't think that the Nets, when they traded KG and Paul Pierce to them, would be as bad as they were. And you guys are losing NBA Finals, which is the dream: get to a final and lose. Yeah, not for me, but if that's your guys' Different you know standards. goals, I, I understand. Yeah. yeah. Did you not have fun last year? No, I did. I I, I get it. I, that I, was a know, fun ride for you. It was an amazing ride. You think about but that. I want. I you want, close your I eyes and think confetti. about how fun that spring summer. I've was. experienced it. I'm not gonna. I know. I don't want to like you know. Rain on your parade. I know what you guys want. It's not as fun as winning, but it's still fun. Very fun. But once you win, it's like you just want to win. You guys have to get to that point. We had to taste it. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're losers. We are officially losers. I'm actually like like, trying to think. We're such losers that in our wildest dreams of winning, we still lose. That's that's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm. I'm trying to think of what's a fair hypothetical. Like if for the next fifty years, I said that. Your team can win one Super Bowl, but the rest of the, the, the 49 years, they won't go to the playoffs. That would suck. Or in the next 50 years, your team can lose 15 Super Bowls. <laughs> I would take I, the one. I, take, I no, don't know. No, no, I don't no, know, no, dude. I, because what a run that would be. Losing 15 Super Bowls is kind of a mini dynasty. You get to go to – like, just think about how fun <laughs> Super Bowl is, week would this be. Is, this is this is because we've actually – this is great because we both had the thought about how bad our teams are independently, and then we've stumbled upon this hypothetical that just shows how rock bottom we are. I actually think that the highlight of my next year in sports <laughs> is going to be – being ecstatic <clears throat> when Christian Yelich loses the home run derby. Yeah, it does it when he <laughs> That's tears it. his back. Yeah, fuck, man. Billy, do you feel bad for us as as Bears and Commanders fans? No, not anymore. Okay, all right, cool. <laughs> I actually had some kid come up to me. I can't remember. Maybe it was Super Bowl week. And he's like, I wanted to fuck. I'm a Jets fan, lifelong Jets fan. I want to fucking fight Billy in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> We were riding high. We were like cheeseheads in Green but Bay. It never, yeah, that's right. It was after it the Packers. It was, come won. on. Yeah, it never, it never would be that high. Um, with it, I was thinking about Aaron Rodgers' darkness retreat that he just got out of a little bit more over the weekend. I think he, it's the same thing as doing a death simulator. Yeah. He was just simulating being dead for a prolonged period of time. But it wasn't even that long of a time. But I, I think like your body, if you just don't see any light for two, three days at a time, you probably get that DMT hit. Your yeah. body thinks that you're dead. Yeah. But again, he went for two nights. Yeah. That's the craziest part. Oh, we had, we did have, we also had Russell Wilson, uh, more Russell Wilson, uh, like clean up. The postmortem. The postmortem. Yeah. It's just basically any Russell Wilson hater just keeps getting like a, a new a new video just dropped on YouPorn. Come read it on The Athletic. Russell Wilson had his own office and uh, everyone thought it was weird. It It's so basically... Talked about how everything fell apart uh, in this past year. Uh, said that he asked for an ultimatum on his way out of, before the Seahawks got traded. He asked for Pete Carroll and John Schneider. Is that right? Is that his name? Yep. Uh, to get fired. So basically, a, you you know, them or me situation. The Seahawks smartly were like, well, okay, you, you're you gone. And we'll get a bunch of picks for it. Went to uh, Denver. Had his own staff in the building, had his own office upstairs, and 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 teammates were like, he was. He told us all we had. He had an open door policy. Yeah. And one of the anonymous sources was like, you know, what's an open door policy? Being at your locker. Yeah, a locker. Yeah, yeah. You're, everyone has an open door policy. It so is very bizarre to like go up to your teammates, being like, just so you know, you can always come and talk to me. Yeah, no shit. Upstairs, and also make an appointment with my manager yeah. to see if I have time. So he's on his own floor. Like it's it was like the Bernie Madoff thing where yeah. you have that's the secret floor where all the bad shit yeah. happens. Yeah. So it was like him and and Hackett upstairs, and and all the coaches and, and the uh, the side. He had a whiteboard that was as big as the wall where he would just write motivational quotes on the wall for yeah. himself to read, decorated like it was home goods, and uh, the players could come up to the second floor if they wanted to. And before Hackett was fired... Did he have office hours? He did have office hours. Before <laughs> before Hackett got fired, Latavius Murray reached out to Sean Payton and asked Sean Payton, like, hey, Sean, 
come to Denver, me and my backfield teammate, we want you there. And Sean Payton was trying to think of like what other running backs on the team he could be talking about. He's like, what, who are you talking about? He actually wrote him back. He's like, who do you mean? And Latavius said, number, number, three, three. number three, which that was the week before they got their ass kicked by the Rams. Remember when Baker yeah. dropped like 51 on them? Yeah. That was that. So Nathaniel Hackett was still the coach of the team. Well, players on the team were reaching out to Peyton and saying, hey, Russ and I want you to coach this team next year. Yeah, it was um, – I actually went away feeling bad for Nathaniel Hackett. Um, I would like to get him back on the show. I was thinking about it. Just yeah. to be like hey, – if he, if he could laugh about it and be like, yeah, I, that was, I wasn't ready for that job, I think it would be fun. But he – his biggest crime, Nathaniel Hackett, was – he walked into a situation where he just wanted to please everyone and he wanted to please Russell Wilson and he wanted to kind of be his buddy, not his dad. That's what you get. Yeah. First time head coach. Right. You don't come in and you're not going to lay down the law. He said he wanted it to be like collaborative right. and that Russell Wilson wanted it to be kind of the Kyrie Irving model on the nets where the players helped coach the team. So it was Russell Wilson that was installing his own plays along with the help of his quarterback coach. And they were giving input on what the play calls were going to be to Nathaniel Hackett. He was like, cool. Yeah. You know, I'm not like the other coaches. I'm the fun coach. Right. You can come talk to me. I'm right. I'm cool. I want you guys to succeed. So that didn't work at all. Now Peyton's coming in and Peyton's going to be like, okay, new sheriff in town, get your quarterback coach out of my facility. I'm going to be calling the plays because yes. that's what I do as a head coach. I also love that. Uh, he was basically uh, at the, I think it was the last two weeks of the season. They got rid of Russell Wilson's office. Cause like maybe this is a bad idea. Um, little, little too, too little, too late. I'd say. Yeah. I mean, in that situation, I, I do you think he had his name on the door? Uh, maybe it probably said Mr. Unlimited. Yeah. Mr. Unlimited. Come, please come see me if you need, if you need anything. Yeah. L like that has to be the most awkward situation to be like, like, imagine if I walked in one day, and was like, listen, anything you need, you can always come to me. Mm -hmm. like, no, we're, we're teammates, dude. What are you talking about? Yeah. Like that's what he was doing yeah. to his teammates. Just so you know, like I'm Yeah. I if you have any concerns yeah. or just questions, give me a call. It's just gonna be me and our HR yeah. rep yeah. and we're just gonna, <laughs> you know, talk like normal guys. PFT, if you if you need me to do a quick run through of the ads with you before we tape the show, mm -hmm. I'm happy to do that. That's awesome. That's very that's very, <laughs> like, very thoughtful of you. <laughs> no shit, his teammates are like, What the fuck is this guy on? Yeah. So uh yeah. That was a that was a cool story to read. I'm looking forward to. I'm going to access some more content on my Athletic Premium Plus account to get the details you guys don't get. Yeah, I have I have Athletic Premium. Do you? Yeah, but do you have Premium Plus? Yeah, what, what it gets the podcast? The and stuff? No, you the credit check. Is credit check? It's uh, four ninety nine a month, four hundred dollars a month. What do you mean? I just get all the information, the secret stuff that's like buried deep. Got it. Yeah, you yeah. probably no. I probably don't have. You that. need a letter of recommendation from three current subscribers and one editor. Yeah, and so, a, and yeah, there's like a blood oath ceremony, right? Yeah, yeah. We're not actually. Yeah. Hey, can you delete this part from the podcast? <laughs> I'm not allowed to. Talk I do about. Like, violated my NDA. I actually do like the athletic. It is funny though that uh, well, not funny because people lose their jobs with it. Like, I saw that that dork Stuart Mandel, uh, who hated the Barstool Sports Bowl, like saying that. Uh, the Pac-12 is losing losing RS or no teams are losing RSN. So like the like Bally Sports isn't going to cover this team or whatever. The day that the Athletic, he's the college football editor. The day the Athletic lost the writer for the Wash for Washington Huskies and Virginia, Virginia Tech Hokies. Like the the mm -hmm. idiocy of him to say that. Be like, look at all these teams they're losing uh, great coverage. Mm -hmm. While they're because the athletic needs to they just need to do more Russell Wilson stories. They, this is, I'll always read that. Th that's this is my favorite part of the athletic actually is the postmortems that yeah. go on. They did one with Urban Meyer last yep. year. Yeah, I love it. when things are happening. It's like we always think about hard knocks. Yeah, but I can't wait to watch this on hard knocks later when shit gets super dysfunctional with the NFL teams. I just can't wait to see that like real clean font from the athletic yes. come out yes. in three months where it's they great. talk about all the shit that went down. Yeah, we just did an ad for them, but that's okay. Uh, I mean, Stuart Mandel, you're a dork. Uh, <laughs> follow, <laughs> you I'll, are. You're I'll, a dork. I'll put out some screen grabs from my Premium Plus stuff on Twitter, Me so you don't have to subscribe to them. I'll I'll pass that along. Remember when he tweeted about how uh, upset he was and aghast he was that the, the vaunted bowl uh, world was getting, like, sullied by by the Barstool sports name and you just owned him you're like yeah it's not like we have a bowl sponsored by the company that 
kills people with bombs. No, yeah, Lockheed, Lockheed Martin. <laughs> like, Lockheed Martin's business model is to figure out how to kill as many people as possible yeah. as efficiently as possible. But damn, those guess that ass guys have a bull now. Yeah, this is Fuck. the end of the world. That's a, that's dork behavior. It is dork. I'm behavior. not saying anything mean about him. He's just a dork. Um, all right. Well, uh, oh, should we talk about Jake Paul, Tommy Fury, real quick? Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. When it comes to Jake Paul fights, I don't, I don't really care about Jake Paul, but I am interested in watching the hype that's been built up around him, and specifically fighting a a trained boxer really for the first time. And I, I can put that in quotes for for Tommy Fury because Tommy Fury's opponents leading into this fight, yeah, had a total record of twenty four, a hundred seventy six and five. Yeah, that includes Yevgenius Andrevius who had a lifetime record in boxing of 10, 102, and 3. Yeah. He's lost 102 professional boxing yeah. matches. Yeah, that's hard to do. It's very t- – and then uh, Callum Ide was 0-26-2, and, and then Presmyslaw Bieninada was 2-26, and, and then another guy that was 0-12. And, so- and, and this is what happens in boxing. You obviously – they do this a lot with any, any young boxer – they want to get you as many wins as possible before they challenge you with someone legit. I I, I was the Skip Bayless tweet for this fight. I was I was wrong about being wrong because I've always stood on the the stance that Jake Paul, like it's nice what he's doing. The minute he fights a real boxer, he will get beat. Unfortunately, I didn't think Tommy Fury was a real boxer because I f- saw him fight in Cleveland. And he fought Jake Paul's sparring partner, who was like eight inches smaller than him, and he struggled for four rounds. So that was my miscalculation. Yeah, I mean, but I was right about my original take that once Jake Paul fought a real boxer, he would lose. I just didn't think Tommy Fury was a real boxer. So now my updated boxer rankings are Jake Paul last. Tommy Fury second to last. Jake Paul is like the best amateur boxer in the world. Yeah. Or one of them. He should fight Bobby Lang. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. that would be a great fight. Or Billy. Yeah, or Billy. I'd take that fight. Uh, no okay, shit. Yeah. No <laughs> shit. You Huge. Would. Holy fuck. Against Bobby? No, no, no. Against uh, oh. Jake Paul. Yeah. You should fight Bobby. You should fight Bobby. No, I don't want Billy. No, come on, guys. I don't want Billy come to die. On, come on, guys. Uh, but yeah, I, I always <laughs> Billy thought... Billy would never she... fight a... He's a <laughs> cop, right? <laughs> Yeah, no. I never fight a cop. He's not a cop. Oh. Um, I always <laughs> thought that Jake Paul would lose when he when he went up against a real opponent because it's just boxers are different, pre- like hand hand speed, all these things, and it just unfortunately I didn't think Tommy Fury was a real boxer. His his uh, I was wrong. His bet paid off basically. Him dodging him for that one fight, that whole drama around getting a green card basically because he was connected to organized crime with yeah. the Fury family, like. That dodging him for all that time paid off for Tommy, and like Hasim Rockman would have killed Jake Paul. Now yeah, looking back, no, any on boxer, it. Mm-hmm. yeah, any boxer. Like they were doing that weird weight stuff with Hasim Rockman, and he's like, they're basically trying to make me like not be able to rehydrate back to the full weight. They were J- Jake Paul was trying to mess with Rockman yeah, pre-fight mm-hmm. yeah. so that he couldn't perform to his best in that fight. So I mean, it does set up the perfect rematch because i think more people are going to be interested it, this was i the don't best. Want, i don't want to see a rematch at all but if you because think, at the end of the day i watched it and i was like these guys both suck yeah so i i i do not i'm not interested in a rematch i mean bad boxing is still good visuals really bad boxing yeah is different Tom, rough and rowdy Tom, coming up on friday night yeah, that's yeah that's fun. yeah march 3rd because you don't know what to, you don't know what to expect yeah. like actually the the worst uh, rough and rowdy bouts. We I think we have twenty plus fights on Friday night. It's going to be incredible uh, in West Virginia. Every single time we do a rough and rowdy, it's so much fun. Usually, the fights that are the least entertaining are the guys that know how to box the best. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because they know how to defend themselves and they're they're trying to set up the jab and stuff. So when when you have guys who actually know what they're doing a little bit, like Jake Paul and Tommy Fury, but they aren't good enough to be great boxers. Snooze fest. Wait, didn't Drake put four hundred grand on on Jake Paul? Oof. Yikes. Damn. Oof. I think maybe I just, I might have made that up. Hank, you're what saying is he, yes. Is he poor now? Yeah, Drake's poor. He's poor now. Poor. He's a broke boy. Junior, the <laughs> memes like that one. 
The conspiracy, the conspiracy part of Twitter, the same ones that said Tyron Woodley. Do you mean you? Yeah. No, you. no. <laughs> I, I, look, I am now, you know, giving the warning that this is a reply guy, reply guy. Okay. Too. It right. is funny that we basically, you know, after um, January 6th, they had all those articles being like the making of someone who was like in QAnon. Like, how did this person oh, get here? On. We're playing that out live. Every time Billy's in Billy's brain, yeah. But, but you know how, it, like, you see the de the devolution of a no. Brain. But the, the people were talking about the Tyson Fury fight. There okay, was a yeah, lot of people ahead, who sorry. said, and uh, Anderson Silva. They were yeah. saying like, oh, they're fixed fight. They're saying that Jake Paul, in order to sell the next fight, purposely knew that it would be bad if he won this fight. No, see, so I, that makes zero. That, sense. that makes yeah. zero. No, but it sells the tr it sells the no because no, no one no, want to watch. No, it doesn't. Because, it doesn't because this was, what this, I said. this was going to be a yeah. fight for Jake Paul to prove that he can beat a real boxer, and then and he, then he would get boxer. a real real boxer afterwards. So this just kind of like it it pops the balloon of Jake Paul's growing like profile in right. boxing, where now he has to go back and start over from scratch. Like, and so no one out there can actually say with a straight face that Jake Paul could compete. In professional boxing, and because I watched he lost this match. I watched the whole fight, and at no point was like, "I want to see this again." I think casuals might. I don't. I. I. Eh. I think the storyline's better for a for second. A second, fight. yeah. That's like because if he beats I'm Tommy, opting out on the second. That's like they so, would probably sell more for the second one than the first. Yeah, one. that's what I, I think know. so. I don't know. I don't know. So d diving into Billy's conspiracy brain, like because we didn't even talk about the Anderson Island, Silva bro. fight. You can, didn't you, can, like, you can spin that either way, though, depending on where you're Tommy at. Fury's I don't think that there's name. a massive conspiracy. Like, A.J. Brown's tweet, did you see that on yeah, Friday, yeah. where he said that we haven't been to the moon because we've never been back to the moon? Imagine if the U.S. government sent people to the moon, like, every month. People would be like, why the fuck are we spending millions of dollars to go to the moon instead of spending that money back here? You can play that either way to be a conspiracy. So, like, Billy, with your point, if, if Jake Paul had, if, if he had won this fight... I'm telling you right now that his next fight would be much, much bigger. Correct. But now it's that he lost, then you could just pull it out of your ass and say, well, no, his fight's going to be better next time because it's a rematch. No, but like, for example, we didn't talk about the Anderson Silva fight he had. Like this, this Tommy, this matchup is the most profitable matchup for him that he's but had. But he would have gone to another boxer after this. Who do you that, think? I don't, he would have kept, it would have, what PFT is saying, and I agree with like Jake Paul's, the entire premise was he's going to shake up the boxing world by slowly building up to real boxers. This was his first real boxer, and it's what what was the records of guys that he yeah. fought uh, against? 24, 176, and 5. Like, but, if he had beaten him, then he gets another step up, then he gets another step up. But I don't think the next step would have been as big of a, a market of people wanting to buy it. Maybe. That's what I'm saying. Because, like, some... I just know personally I did not. Yeah. I watched it, and I was like, if this happens again, I don't... Because the... the, the Reason why I tuned in this time was to be like, can Jake Paul beat a real boxer? Also, he threw way like his punch output was so low, Jake Paul yeah. in the fight. It was like he was. Uh, well, Tommy had three hundred and fifty punches. He only had one hundred fifty seven. I mean, it probably when you fight a real boxer, it's probably a lot harder to to time it and also be like, fuck, I could get hit at any moment. And a guy your size right. and age. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. I, I feel like no one won that one. Yeah, well, that fight. Jake Paul, I like probably Tom, got I've paid. always liked Tommy Fury. So you do? I'm happy, yeah. You're a big Tommy Fury guy? Yeah. Why is that? Uh, I watched his season of Love Island, and I wasn't, you know, not a huge reality guy, but I got sucked into it, and I actually liked him a lot. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Hank, since we're on you, before we get to who's back of the week in Christian Yelich, yeah. uh, would you like to talk at all about uh, you just stomping on the grave of Philadelphia? They've already been buried. In a Saturday night, the, the, credit to the NBA. These Saturday night games are fun to watch. Like they do a good job with the matchups and everything. Uh, but just a perfect way for Philly. Like the Embiid shot was so fucking crazy, and it didn't count. Jason Tatum is an absolute ice cold killer. How do you feel knowing that you just killed a bunch of people that are already dead? I feel great. I mean, my my rivalry with Philly is really rooted in the Celtics and Sixers. Obviously, there was a Super Bowl a few years ago. That kind of you know. What happened? The the Eagles beat the Patriots, but the Patriots have also beat the Eagles. So that's just a one one match. But you know, me and Max's contention and, and and shit talking is always around the Celtics and Sixers. They've they've had a lot of playoff matchups in the past few years, so it's a it's a very fun rivalry to watch. The Celtics win every single time. They were down like fifteen. <laughs> Maybe that's why it's fun for you. Great great fourth cur for, fourth quarter comeback. Great uh, Brad Stevens, you know, out of the timeout call. They asked him afterwards, like. 
how'd you come up with that? He just said, I stole it from Brad. Uh, and then Embiid, that was, when he hit that shot, it was like, no fucking way. And then it was just a, just a second, second. He knew it, too. He was in the locker room before they even reviewed it. You remember, I think it was last year or two years ago when, when Embiid had that one full court heave from yes, uh, basically the, the foul line. It yeah, almost went in. He's, he now has two of the best last second misses yeah. of all time. Yeah. It was so close. And Max is still on vacation. I'm going to call him real quick because he was upset that you were memeing him so hard. Not even hard, you know. I saved obviously the 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 Eagles losing the Super Bowl. There were some very very funny memes made by the AWL. I saved a couple of them, and then when they lost, they were it was so recent that they were just at the top of my camera roll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he is still on vacation. I the biggest takeaway from the, that game, we, a, a, a Sixers Celtics yes, playoff will series be would be the best. If, if you're rooting for content for this show, it would be it'd be us versus Max because of Blake, right? Insane. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I, I would just watch. I'd watch you guys just kill each other. Hey, and I, well, Hank, do you support interrupting Max's vacation right now? Max, no. Sorry to interrupt your vacation. <laughs> we need a we need a comment real quick on the game. I didn't watch it. Okay, all right. Thank you. All right. See you. See you tomorrow. Hello. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <laughs> he didn't watch it. He did watch it. I know he watched it. Because we were texting with him after, <laughs> um, yeah. I, the Sixers court looks six too. I'm not. I'm not just it a did, affiliator. It did. Huge fan of their court. Their uniforms disgusting. Court looked great. What would be the funniest outcome for a Sixers Celtics series? I whopping. No, no. That would, I that think it would be. Funny. I think it would be yeah. a, a Sixers three one lead blowing it. That would, yeah, be, that think, would be the funniest content. Be. No, 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 no. Yeah. Shut up, Hank. That would not be good content. Think about for the people. Yeah. A game seven, the Sixers being up 3-1, Max being like, we've won it, it's over, and then you guys coming back and winning in game seven would be, I mean, he would maybe quit. I mean, a uh, 3 nothing comeback would be better. Yeah. If that's the case. Yeah. Holy shit. I think 4-0 sweep would be. Yeah, so fuck you. You see, you don't, you don't care... That, and that's why we. That's can't not true. Here. No, you don't care about the people. That's all I care about. No, so say I was it a four zero sweep. A three, a three one comeback. Doc Rivers actually throwing up on the court in Game Seven yeah. as the Celtics beat them. That that's the good. other funniest wrinkle of it all is that the you know Sixers fans hate Doc Rivers. Yeah, no, Jay Wright will be their coach soon. Uh, all right, we covered a lot. It's a great weekend of sports. It's sports. It's a sports podcast. It's sports, baby. It's a lot of fun. Uh, let's do who's back of the week. Brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. Carving out time in your calendar to kick back and relax can be tough with so much going on. Uh, listen, you have free time. All of a sudden, your free time evaporates. You think you have all this time, and then boom, something pops up. You got to fix something with your car, your house. Got to go see family. Cherish your free time, and you owe it to yourself by cracking open an ice cold Coors Light, the beer that's literally made to chill. I always need to chill the most, like on Friday nights, long week, Just sit down, know we don't have to tape a show for a couple days. That's when I crack open a Coors Light. There's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill, and that's Coors Light. The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. That way you always know when it's time to chill, when it's time to relax, just open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment, made to chill, Mark your calendar for some quality time with Coors Light, the beer made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. CoorsLight.com slash take. Hank, who's back of the week? Uh, my who's back of the week is Manny Machado. Oh. Yeah, got paid. Got paid 11-year, $350 million contract extension. Damn. The Padres... Fun money, it's it's incredible. I don't know I don't know where this came out of, but they're you know they spend more than any other franchise I think in in pro sports. Yeah, it's insane. I mean in baseball it's it's sometimes as simple as just having an owner that wants to win games. You and if you're rich enough, you can absolutely just buy your way into winning games. Yeah, Manny Machado, Tatis Jr., Soto, Bogarts, you Darvish. It also um, Nelson Cruz, Car. I mean they're they're beyond stacked. I feel like part of it was the Blake Snell, the Padres. All right, so they Hater. did. So, so Pete Seidler bought the team in. Uh, let's see, for the Padres. So it looks like 2020, if I have that right. Uh, maybe so. Maybe that's why I don't really have my ownership uh, groups correct. 
But I think the Padres, once they brought back their old uniforms, their owner was like, this is sick. Why don't we have a good team? It's a, yeah, it's a great color scheme. Yeah, you got the, right. The dark brown, the yellow. They rock pinstripes every now and again, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe they purchased it in 2012. I might have that wrong. Either way, yeah, they're spending fun money. It's crazy. It's insane. What are they going to do about Tatis? What's what's Tatis up to these she days? Tell him to pr- be, be a good boy, please. Yes. So he yeah. He's got to be unsuspended, what, 50 games or something? Yeah, I think he had a – yeah, he should be back. He should be back. Just please stop doing that, I think is all they're going to say. I think I think the Padres, they're going to be the most fun team in baseball this year. Yeah. That was their baseball preview. Yeah. Which we did with Ryan Russillo as well. That's true. Yeah. Uh, who, who's uh, who, What's your who's back? PSG. My who's back of the week is Sam Hurd. Yes. We might have spoken this into existence yep. last week in our cocaine bear preview. But Sam Hurd has been released from federal penitentiary in Bastrop, Texas, after serving a 10-year sentence for distributing cocaine and marijuana, just like copious amounts of cocaine. Yep. And I mean that even like as a Dallas Cowboys wide receiver, yeah. he was into significant amounts of cocaine. And so he's out of prison. Timing is very suspicious with the release of Cocaine Bear. A lot of people are saying that this judge might have taken some money to do some guerrilla marketing for the movie. It's like that woman who was sitting in the MLB stands staring at people last year, yeah, for whatever or, movie that was. Or when the clowns were a big thing in 2017 for, for It. Or, or it as was, we called it. What was the what was the Coke that just like got us? Orange vanilla. Oh, remember orange that? Vanilla. Whopper, 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 no, yeah. whopper. Oh, remember that whole March Madness. Orange, orange vanilla, vanilla Coke. Yeah. Yeah. What was the song? Orange vanilla Coke. Yeah. I, yeah. That that sounds right. Yeah. So this <laughs> is no way. Yeah. It's viral no, marketing. This is, gonna, this is gonna bother me. I'm gonna look it up. But yeah, they had those guys sitting in the stands and shit. Yeah. So so Sam Hurd is officially out of prison. The Cowboys should sign him. Like, it'd be very funny if Sam Hurd got back into the NFL after all this. Yes, I'd agree. Bring him back. Why not? Where is the Where's the orange vanilla Coke? Let's see. And so he was, I think we talked about it last week, he was trying to move, like, millions of dollars of cocaine at a time, which is, I mean, you got to have dreams. You got to have goals and ambition. And he knew that he wasn't going to be the best player in the NFL. So he's like, I might as well be the best drug dealer. In right. the NFL, right? Which he he was on on pace to do, um, but credit to him for having some ambition, also for for getting out of prison after ten years. Yeah, that's got to be such a great day, huh? Being in prison ten years, you get out. There's I think a movie about you. There's a movie about you coming out. <laughs> like, I holy think shit. first thing you do after you get out of prison in a ten year sentence, I would probably just go go to McDonald's, get some fries. Yeah. Get a Big Mac. Yes. Taco Get a Bell. huge Taco steak. Bell. Yeah. I, I think you go fast food immediately, and then you have like a big dinner later on after that where you go out and get a nice steak. But you just you stop at the first fast food restaurant you see. Yeah. Can someone find this? I, this is going to drive me nuts now. What are you looking for? Orange vanilla. No, this isn't it. I think I was right. I think it's orange vanilla Coke. Yeah, kind of. You were kind of right. I don't know. I, there was one ad. Someone will send it to me. Did, do you guys remember this? It was like yeah. nonstop. It was everywhere. Was it 2019? Maybe. Now we're just playing commercials. I like this. This is good podcasting. People are like, how, no how free did, ads. How did these guys do it? <laughs> we just start playing music or er, er, ads. Okay, wait. Yeah, you're yeah, kind of yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking orange vanilla coke. That racked my brains for. That what will be the ad this March Madness? There's always one because it's just the the only time. I, I know that we had the as Whopper long as it's Whopper. Not Mentory. Yeah, we had the what? Yeah, we had the Whopper Whopper all fall. But March Madness is a one time a year where it's like you do watch. 18 hours of TV straight for four days, and yeah. you just see every ad. For a while, it was uh, Impractical Jokers. Yeah. They were everywhere. I feel like Chris Paul and, and Rogers, Mahomes. Oh, like yeah. Safe, safe yeah, yeah. Every... Something's going to make us want to kill I'm excited ourselves. to see the new Jim Nance, Charles Barkley. Uh, oh, Samuel yeah. Jackson. Road to it. Yeah, they yeah. do it every year. Yeah. 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 Albuquerque. Yeah. Um, all right. My who's back of the week is Live Golf. Yeah. But no one's watching it. So Live Golf is yeah. back. Uh, it was broadcasted. So Greg Norman last year said there were four networks that were in a bidding war for Live Golf. Um, ended up being CW, 
was the network that won out of the four networks. Uh, uh, you might remember great CW network. Yeah, from great network. broadcasting what One Tree Hill. Yeah. Well, did, they, did they do uh, Barcelona Sports Advisors for a year in Philadelphia? Yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> Seventh Heaven. Yeah. So it got a point two rating. Um, on CW, it was outrated by World's Funniest Animals. And by the Barstool Sports Mini Golf Adventure. Yes. I think yes. we got more Unofficially. Viewers. Unofficially. But, uh, yeah. yeah, Live Golf is back and no one's watching it. Also, I don't know if we ever talked about it, but uh, it's very funny that Live Golf doesn't have the Twitter handle, Live Golf. Yeah. Do you know who has it? Yeah, it's a, a girl it's named a, Liv. A, Olivia. Oh, Olivia like Powling golf. in South <laughs> Wales. She's a junior golfer, age 17, and her Twitter handle is Live Golf. MBS is going <laughs> to have his goons pay a little. How has she her. not gotten the bag? Yeah. yeah, I'm my four year old son Chris walked in the other day and he was like, "Dad, can we put the the Aces are playing? Yeah, can we watch the Aces? He's a big Aces fan. I don't know why they thought like golf is not a team sport. No, it's never going to be a team sport. No, it, I was Ryder right, Cup, Ryder Cup, twi- yeah, every two years. But that's that's not teams. That's that's, that's countries. It's America. Yeah. People are watching for America on that one. Yeah. They even try to do the what with the President's Cup. No one can really get into that because what is it? It's America versus uh, the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, I think it's the is rest that right? of the world. No, I think it's the rest of the world. Everybody except for Europe. Yeah, it's the rest of the world. That's like, come on. No, we want to we want to beat the fucking want to beat those guys. So I've, I've been the golf yeah, bug. Minus Europe is the official. What? Yeah. Rest of the world minus Europe. Yeah, the yeah. Official. I, I, the golf bug bit me big time. I've been practicing a lot. I think I'm not going to try to, you know, get on the PGA tour. I'm not trying to become a pro in that way. But I think I would be. I think I'm going to make myself open for the live tour. Yeah, that's my goal yeah. is to have the live It'd tour. Sign you. It's going to be breaking a hundred mil. Just give me, just pay me. Yeah, and I mean, you think the live tour would be interested? Absolutely. In a washed up podcast that sucks. Someone used podcaster as a uh, slur at me today. I didn't like it. Yeah, it's our word. Yeah, it was very. It was very. Wait, did he say with an A at the end no, or he was ER? Like, you're, a, you're a Jake Paul Stan, forty year old podcaster. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> it was fucked up. That's our word. Even Billy wouldn't say it. He no. says all of those. <laughs> uh, the uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, speaking of golf, we will have our full swing review on Wednesday. So if you haven't watched it, it's on Netflix. It's awesome. We're going to have a couple guys on who maybe were featured. Mm-hmm. So get excited. Drive to Survive is also back, and I watched oh. the first episode, and I was racking my brain on what happened, and I actually don't remember. Yeah, we, so I'm, we kind of fizzled out on that. I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, full swing. The, 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 we will do the full review, but just a quick review is, oh, this was a fun memory lane of all the times I lost money betting on Will Zalatoris. To yes. Get, uh, yeah. fucking yes. I remember where I was just because Every, I was witnessing that. They're like, yeah. oh, yeah, Will Zalatoris on the leaderboard. I was like, God fucking damn it. He was always around. This year. This is the year. For sure. This is I, I will bet him in every major until he wins a major. That is a guarantee. I'm going I'm going Willie Z and Max, Max for yep. the Masters. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay, Billy, who's your who's back? Bones. Bones are oh, back. Oh, yeah. Our dudes. Uh, so Dirty Water Don, the guy that uh, Donnie does and I went diving the East River for bones with, he has found a bone. He found a jawbone of a steppe bison, which is just a prehistoric gigantic bison, uh, just like bigger horns, bigger, just like totally prehistoric bison. Anyway, he found the jawbone in the East River. So that means that it is true. There were tons of bones dumped there. Is that where you guys were looking? That same location? So it's a little, it was a little different of location. It may have been because of how, I mean, almost a hundred years of tidal waters moving in and out has moved some of it, but they might've found like sort of the, uh, the jetty off where it goes, where they, you could find the bone. So there, they found the spot. They're looking at it more in depth. Rogan uh, posted their picture. So, I mean, they did. They How found much the money is that worth? Because they were saying it was going to be worth like hundreds of millions of dollars, well, right? So, basically, imagine like you're looking for a treasure chest full of gold coins. They found one coin. Right. So, okay. then you find the rest of it. And also, Step A Bison, you know, uh, bones aren't as valuable as a mammoth tusk. Okay. But means that they're sniffing in the right place. Which one did you find? We found a mammoth fu- tusk. Fights oh. uh, Halloween. That's yeah. more oh, the giant, valuable. Giant the giant skeleton. spirit I would like Halloween. to see yeah, any of these skeleton, fuckers yeah. find that. Yeah. Can't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can't, can't find, find it. it. <laughs> Straight from the Halloween store. So are you going to go back? 
Uh, I I actually now that he's found it. I'm yeah. You got yeah. Him, I'm, Billy, I'm going you back. have. There's going back. back. Going back. Definitely going to be a bone rush. Billy, yeah. this could be. You could make millions of dollars. Honestly, I think it would probably go to them. We'll see if I get a cut. You're really bad at negotiating uh, Billy. right now, Billy. All right, we need to talk before you get on this boat. Yeah, you need to have. Come on, we, or you need to buy a boat. Yeah, we an need investment to, get a boat. to buy the or find the bones. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I actually would. You guys like to finance another journey because then we could. I'm get, still waiting to get recouped for my initial investment. I know, but we they found the bone, mm -hmm. so now yeah, this is so promising. He, this is good. Basically, news. Basically, Billy found a, a bone. Wait, yes. wait, do I get a cut of that because yeah. I financed his initial mission? Well, no, it wasn't the initial. If we found anything that day, I think you'd have claims. But if, the fact that you're not already just handing me money to go find the bones means that you, you're. Not yeah, swayed. You're kind of missing out, you, dude. I am, I am. You should just be handing me like this is a once in a lifetime investment just Venmo, opportunity. Venmo, probably not the cash. Um, just it's easier to move. Okay, but yeah. I'll consider it. Just think about it. I'll, I'll consider. Can you give me a proposal? Yes. Okay. Billy just so, walked in and showed you the first Mac computer. It was like, yeah. do you want to invest? I, I, Billy, after you're done doing your New York Jets Which I'm getting project. done. Oh. When you guys are back from Indianapolis, it <laughs> oh. will be done. I oh. promise. Okay. I promise. Deadline That's there. That's this week. When do you guys get back? Friday. Okay. Yeah, it will be done. The wow. full presentation. Yes. It's not just going to be you doing a TikTok green screen. No. Of here's why th this guy wasn't good. This guy wasn't good either. Right. So I I actually have it totally outlined. All right. I so have you have till thesis. Monday. You have till Monday. And okay, chat. Perfect. The chat GPT I will not write up. this. Is he allowed I, to help me edit? Billy's just push it all <laughs> to the weekend. Wait, wait. Why Why do you think that the AI thing is a he? Uh, can it help me edit? No. But like just like for grammar and stuff. I, I, don't, I, don't, th I don't think I'm way out of bounds to tell you that you cannot have a robot do your project for I, it's you. It's not doing my project. It's just <laughs> editing my project. Like, you know how much my, better my grades would have been if I had this thing looking over my essays in college? Just like correcting. All right. Here's, what, here's what I'll say. I want. Give us the unedited and edited version. Perfect. Okay. okay. Redline it. Yeah. Redline yep. the chat GBT. All right. And yeah. Give me the New York Jets quarterback presentation. Then submit your proposal for more funding. Well, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, this bone rush might be more time uh, sensitive. sensitive. So oh, so we got to push the we Jets back. We might have to back. push the yeah, Jets yeah, back. All right. Okay. All right that's I mean, fine. you do make a good point because there are going to be people looking for these yeah, bones yeah. now. Yeah. All right, so so as, the as long as you preview. promise that the, you'll do the New York Jets quarterback it thing It will be soon. done. All right, actually, so give us a, a complete investment breakdown next Sunday on the bones okay. and then the Jets the next week. Perfect. All right. Okay. Uh, Jake. Uh, my who's back is scoring points. We had the second highest scoring game in NBA history on Friday night. Oh, I saw this. Kings 176, Clippers 175. Delhi. three Delhi difference. 51. So I had the Clippers, and I was like, I'm good, because I looked at the score, and it was like 130 to 123, and there was like maybe three minutes left in the third quarter. I thought it was the fourth quarter. And then I looked back, and I was like, wait, what? This is how the fuck did it? What was it? Double overtime, one seventy six, one seventy five. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Also, congratulations to the Kings because in October I had them as the worst professional team in American oh, sports. Oh, they're good. Like the beam. <laughs> they're like, like good. The beam. Are you, you gotta? You I gotta, gotta update that. Fox. You're all sports power Aaron rankings. Fox has been on tear. I have to update that. But yeah, the Kings are suddenly like more than relevant. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Looking, looking at the box score right now, yeah. uh, two players that scored in the forties: Malik Monk and Darren Fox. Delhi, um, Malik Monk, uh, recurring guest. That's that's right. Yeah, Delhi contributed um, intangibles to that game. Yep, did not play. Yep, he did. He absolutely did. Uh, he was on the bench for the second highest scoring game in NBA history, and he gave the boys a look in scout team. Yeah, absolutely did. <laughs> All right, let's get to our awesome interview with Christian Yelich, talking a little more baseball, catching up with him. It was awesome because we did we 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 literally ran into him out on the street outside of our bar in Scottsdale, and we're like, "Fuck, man." Haven't seen you in a while, and it was awesome to catch up with him. Uh, got a lot of history with him. And Christian Yelch is brought to you by our friends at Norton LifeLock. Tax season can be taxing on your identity because all your personal information is all in one place. Getting emailed, shared, and possibly exposed to identity thieves. Tax forms can be like one-stop shops for ID thieves, which means it can be dangerously easy to steal your identity. Protection against identity theft is easier with LifeLock by Norton. LifeLock by Norton helps monitor your info and alerts you to potential identity threats. And if you do become a victim, a dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it during tax season and beyond. 
No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses, but you can make sure your identity theft protection starts here. Join LifeLock today. Save up to 25% off your first year by going to LifeLock.com slash PMT. That's LifeLock.com slash PMT for 25% off. Join LifeLock today. Protect yourself. LifeLock.com slash PMT. Make sure you're doing that. Make sure you're protecting yourself during this busy season. LifeLock.com slash PMT for 25% off. Okay, here he is, Christian Yelich. Okay, we now welcome on very good friend of the show, recurring guest, fourth time on. It is Christian Yelich, Milwaukee Brewers. Also the guy who's going to maybe give us, probably end the show. We should start with that. Um, so for anyone who's new to the show, was it like four years ago? It was uh, in Miami at the All-Star Game. Yeah we, yeah, we were like, you don't have a home run swing, Christian. You didn't. And you, and you told us, yeah, I do. Um, the next year you won the MVP and you were supposed to be in the home run derby and then you hurt your back a week before it which was thankful for us because we said if you ever win a home run derby we will eat each other's ass yeah um now there's a there's a little bit of a story to that because yes there was a video that came well, out christian that has been in a porn christian was in a porn allegedly. video that came allegedly out. allegedly <laughs> allegedly you were really tonguing down some fart boxes <laughs> yeah. and uh we said to ourselves well your home run swing it's non-existent We'll eat each other's ass if you win the home run derby. And we were we were very nervous. Yeah. For about there was a, a three week period where me and Big Cat sat down and we had to figure out, okay, how are we going to be able to eat each other's asses and still continue <laughs> yeah. on with our lives? How are we gonna go forward? <laughs> yeah. So 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 let's start there. How is the home run swing feeling? And do you think you'll ever get back to being in the home run derby? It's feeling pretty good, actually. No. Yeah, you know what? You know, feeling feeling healthy, feeling good. I think that video is honestly how we uh started to get to know each other actually yes Just, uh, we yeah. watched the, it together the, all the, of us. the, the alleged video <laughs> yes. i like, to, I like yes. to point out um but yeah that's still one of my still one of my biggest like regrets <laughs> what if moments of my career was not not being able to do that home run derby and it was like not solely because like i wanted to do a home run derby in my life it was because of everything that was on the line and all yeah. the all the ways that you guys were uh scheming up to try and like get out of that bet and yes. how it was gonna work well, yeah. I, I was talking to somebody about the other day after we ran into you on the streets here in scottsdale and i said I, I gave them the backstory and how me and big cat were talking about what we would do to get out and maybe like we i think we said We'd like cut a piece of our asshole, make a chili, and then oh, put it into a yeah, chili, yeah. and then we'd eat the chili, and that yeah. that would be better. And they said to me, and I felt like the biggest dumbass in the world, like PFT, why didn't why wouldn't you just cut like a piece of your cheek off? You don't have to do the asshole. Yeah. The bet we never said that we'd eat each other's <laughs> asshole in the bet. I was like, oh my god, yeah, you're right. <laughs> we were just focused on the wrong hole. Yeah, was, and you did have, I mean, that year you hit what 44 home runs, I think was. The, yeah, yeah. Not so great after that. What happened? No, dude, I just haven't been on the show in a little while. You yeah, see, you know, I think it's you guys were the were the key to the. Oh, you're gonna well, yeah. you're gonna use this. As well, everybody, you know, everybody likes like a comeback story. You yeah, know, it's like mm -hmm. a, it's, it'll be like our, our journey back to the the home run derby. <laughs> yeah, you know? and then I think we got six more, at least six more years left of uh, of playing. So you guys are you guys are on the hook for six more years. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I mean, you should have gone with the. Uh, this year only bet yeah yes. which was well, 2018 or 19 i forgot yeah I forgot which year it was but a little bit smarter and then now all the all the fans of the show are gonna you know hold you guys accountable which is yeah. unfortunate and truthfully like i didn't i didn't want to see that happen i, yeah, I, you know, I was gonna feel kind of bad if, if it did happen and vladi jr he was doing his best to, to help you guys out because i think he had like 35 homers yeah. in the first round mm -hmm. so there's no telling if i would have uh been able to beat him but. well and also pete alonzo takes the home run derby way too seriously so we just need him to just keep competing and uh yeah having it be his world series that's every true year. yeah he wins that thing every single year yeah so you never know though you know we'll have uh maybe we'll be able to like pay him off or something but hey this year you gotta you gotta sit out because we got a lot of stuff on the line yeah you know, all right so have everybody so, else throw the home run derby just to see yeah mm -hmm. so knowing that you will keep us to this i think we can be mean back what happened to your swing you stopped hitting home runs I don't know, man. Baseball's a baseball's a hard game. <laughs> yeah, it all uh, it all went downhill from there. But uh, you know, it's one of those things. And like I said, everyone likes a good good comeback story. Yeah. Um, are you? Did you uh, lose muscle mass? Are you weaker? Mm. I knew you guys are gonna. I knew you guys are gonna ask about the, the steroids, but yeah. The guys, the guys, info that you gave that. me, just you never picked I'm up. A, you never picked up his phone. I'm yeah. offended that you thought that's where I was going with that. I but was, if we're gonna bring that up, let's, I'm just gonna rattle this off real quick. 
four home runs, nine home runs, seven home runs, 28 home run, 21 home runs, 18 home runs, 36, 44 home runs. Oh, wow. Then back to 12. COVID season, though. COVID season, then nine, then 14. You, you did have a couple of injuries in there, but, you know, that's Brady Anderson, Christian Yelich, people are saying. It's just <laughs> – what was his? He had like – he had 50. Eight, eight nine, 59, <laughs> and then yeah. went back to seven. A little fishier than, uh, yeah. you know, ours was kind of going like this, and I, I think we're right. We're going, yeah. going back in the right direction. Do you, are, you, are you fully healthy? Because I know you did have a couple injuries the last few yeah, years. Yeah, no, I, this, is a, this is the best I've felt, like, in a few years going into spring training and then hopefully keep it that way. Uh, body feels good, and swing's been feeling good. Just been, uh, you know, putting in more, uh, more baseball time this offseason to kind of just iron some things out and – Get back after it. So I, I'm all, I've always been curious with this spring training. You know, we know that like uh, preseason for football, guys don't like it. They don't like camp. Probably the same for basketball and hockey. It feels like spring training is just really fun because you guys get to be in Arizona, mm -hmm. you get to golf, and then you play like a couple innings of baseball yeah. every day. And then you just because we went to the Cubs spring training a few years ago, they would just like Rizzo would would bat twice then get a golf cart back to the facility and then just be out the door in like the fourth inning. Yeah. It's the beginning of spring training is fun because it's, uh, you come back, it's good to see everybody again. Like you really probably haven't seen many of your teammates over the off season or maybe one or two of them, but everybody's back together again, uh, excited about a new year starting. And then, yeah, you play like three innings, your first couple games mm -hmm. and then you have a day off and then three days. And I mean, day off from playing a game, you go practice in the morning, but if you're not playing the game, you're usually done by 10 30, 11 o'clock. And then, go do whatever till you gotta be back in the morning so is, I, i've always liked spring training yeah is it true too with spring training like the old saying hope springs eternal like every time you go to spring training even if you have on a team that maybe doesn't have a ton of talent you're like anything could happen here oh i've been on plenty of teams where it's like <laughs> everyone's got us underrated no one thinks we can do this but we're gonna win the world series and then <laughs> it's september and we lost like 100 games <laughs> and he's like ah oh, i guess it wasn't our year you know, they all give you like a shirt um back in the day we'd have like a we had a i think it was about the marlins one year it was a it was a shirt it said like chip right here on the on the shoulder oh god and like a bunch of different like sayings and numbers on it it's like no one's giving us credit we got a talented room here 95 losses that year. <laughs> yeah. our manager got our manager got fired in like may redmond he's a great guy we're all just like we're sorry man <laughs> we all really liked him it was like middle of may and then um it was like the seventh inning and went back in the locker room to get like a protein bar or something and like on the on the tvs in the locker room was like team meeting after the game and we were getting no hit at the time like oh, uh man. it was like shelby shelby miller was throwing a, a no hitter against us he went eight and two thirds and Bohr got a hit actually broke it up but in the seventh inning of that game on the tv screens was uh team meeting after after the game like everybody stick around in the locker room and you could like hear it down the hall and then uh the president of the team came in and was like yeah we just uh we fired mike redmond uh <laughs> we're not going to tell you who your next manager is and you'll find out tomorrow when you come when you come to the stadium <laughs> and that's when they made uh that's when the general manager of the team ended up becoming the manager um and so yeah that was a that was a wild that's crazy time. Ended up not being our season, even though we thought it was in spring training. But I kind of, yeah, kind of circling back. Every, 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 all thirty teams. Um, you know, you think that you got a chance, which is, which is great. You know, you like being optimistic going into mm -hmm. the end of the season. But you know, realistically, there's like probably ten that have a yeah. chance to win the World Series. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you're going to spring training, are there different managers that put you through different drills to get ready for the season, or is it basically like everyone's working on the same stuff? Like baseball has been around forever. We know what we have to practice to get ready. Yeah, I think. Most teams probably do like similar things. Each manager has like their own style about how laid back it's going to be or how regimented it is or what they want to see guys doing. Uh, and even ours, like it changes every year. Like they're like, oh, we did this last year. We really liked it. We're going to keep it. Or we didn't really like this stuff. Like scratch that. We're not mm -hmm. going to do that anymore. Um, is there any like weird drill that they put you through? You see like quarterbacks sometimes going out there with giant foam noodles or whatever and like trying to dodge beach balls, like Big Ben. Oh, well, outfielders, they like kind of give like outfielders like a lot of time killing things because like the infielders and pitchers, they got to work on like bunt defenses or, um, you know, whatever it is they're doing. They, they always have like a ground ball routine that they got to do. And then it's actually important that they figure out like bunt defense stuff or it used to be like shift, shift things. And yeah. then outfielders, like you only catch so many fly balls or you, you work on like 
being around the wall or uh, <laughs> throwing the bases it's, or picking up a ball against the against the wall. <laughs> Spring training basically like learn how to play baseball yeah. all over again. It sounds so fun. It does. Like, yeah. It sounds like a blast. So uh, speaking of the shift, the new rules this year, mm -hmm. um, we think of more hits. Oh yeah, is this I good mean, for you? Yeah, I mean any left-handed hitter, it's going to be good because you know even if you weren't like a a guy that was like full shift, full shift, like you're still losing hits because of it because. Basically, the teams are willing to give you like a single to, to left field. Right. Because they just don't care because it's all about run prevention is why people shift. So they, they're like, oh, if this guy hits a single to left field, he didn't hit a home run. So they right. didn't score. Like it's just a single. And that's why like, if you bunt against a shift, like analytically, teams don't care. It's just more so like just don't hit a homer. Or hit a double, yeah. Yeah, yeah but you did get some shifts because of the – you did get some hits because of the shift as well. But you'd get blown up and a ball that would s stop in the infield grass basically. Yeah. Like, ended up being a hit and and then you lose the one where you hit a line drive to right field and it hits the third baseman right in the chest you know? yeah yeah what is the new rule again it's you can't you have to have two infielders on either side of second base right. yeah i think but i don't know if it's like just the base that's dividing it or like there's more of like a a line that you have to and it also those guys have to have their feet in the dirt yeah yeah, yeah. you can't be in the outfield I right don't think. right but i think you're gonna see and this is just like a, a guess is like I don't know if you can like have like a guy in motion. Like, you can oh, send a guy oh. from like shortstop and just have him start like Canadian running football. as soon as the pitcher throws. Like I don't know if that's legal. That will be that's, exciting though. Yeah. That's great. Or if you have like a, you could probably do like I bet you'll see teams that do like a two man outfield, like center fielder and left fielder, and like move their right fielder to where like the shift guy used to be. Oh, you know if like there's a guy that doesn't really hit the ball to left field very much. Kind yeah. of just this is gonna be like a chess around. match. So there's ways around it. It'll be interesting to see like if teams get super super creative with that. Damn. I bet like a team like the Rays or somebody would, would do something like that. Oh, they'll or, definitely yeah. have or like sure us. We, that's something like we would probably do too. Yeah. Um, Why don't you guys take the catcher and when there's uh, two or fewer outs and no two on. are and nobody on base and less than two strikes, you just move the catcher and you put him at second base and you just bean the umpire because like there's still strikes right when they cross the plate. Technically, yeah. I don't I'm think sure the umpires would be, be stoked about. They'd all be fired up about that. Just having to <laughs> wear so 100 mile hour fastballs off the chest. <laughs> yeah. How many times have you been kicked out of a game? I feel like you were kicked out last year. Twice last year, I think. Uh, four, four, four. You have or an five attitude times problem. Total. Yeah. A bad attitude. No, honestly, it's, there's been a few times where I'm like, ah, oh, it's it probably deserved. Like a lot of times, I like, give you a chance. Like, especially if they, like, kind of know, like, oh, man, I might have missed it. They give you a chance to, like, stay in the game. They'll let you say some stuff, but then once you say a few magic words, you cross the line, you get thrown out. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, I mean, I think all of my ejections have probably been pretty well deserved. Were any of them intentional? Like, you just didn't feel like playing the rest of the game and want to get home? Um, no, I mean, I, I got thrown out in the ninth inning one time last year. It was, like, ninth inning with two outs. We were losing by, like, three or four. Yeah, and that one you just most of the time when you get thrown out of the game, you get back in the locker room and you're just like, "The fuck did you do that for?" Like yeah. that was not worth it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't remember even. I don't even remember what what they were for. It's all been balls and strikes for the most part. Yeah, can't argue balls and. Well, strikes. one of them was uh, I uh, it was like a check swing. And I kind of like dropped my bat and they appealed and they said I went around like strike three, so my bat was on the ground. Strike three, obviously didn't agree with it. But I didn't really do anything. I didn't really do anything yet at the time to get thrown out. And so I was walking back to the uh, back to the dugout. I was like, all right, like I just, you know, mm -hmm. it's two outs. Just go back to the dugout. But my bat was still on the ground. And uh, the home plate umpire was like, hey, you need to pick your bat up. And so at that point, you have like two two choices. You either pitch out and be like, okay, pick yeah. up your bat, yeah. or you just say you fucking pick it up <laughs> <laughs> and then you get thrown out of the game. <laughs> and, Wait, uh, but did you, I think there's more than is, those two choices. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's it. Did so that's what I said. Obviously, you know, what's coming as soon as you say that, like you have that moment of where you've got to decide like, shit, am I, am I picking this bat up or am I getting thrown out of the game? And it was just like, fuck it. I'm getting thrown out of the game. Yeah. You uh, fucking pick did it did up. You, and so when you get thrown out though, you get a, you get a letter from the, like the commissioner's office, like stating like, cause the umpires have to write a report every time. Uh, you get thrown out of the game and it tells you in the letter like what you did to, to get thrown out is like in quotations and I forgot what mine said um, but it said something like at which point like you were told to like pick up your equipment and you said and you said you fucking pick it up it's like, in quotes. It's like I always I always uh 
save those letters because they're kind of funny. Yeah. yeah. You end up being closer with the umpires that throw you out too because you're just like, yeah. Like the next day, you still see them because they're there most of the time the next series. You'll see them down the road. And you're just like, yeah, my bad, man. Like, I know I deserve that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, no hard feelings. Like, that's yeah. on that's on me. And like, so, it's cool. And then you laugh about it down the road. Yeah. Did you did you end up picking up the bat? No. The no. no well, there you go. Then if you nobody won. picked you it won. up, the bat would still be laying at home plate yeah. at, a, yeah, at then, American then Family you Field. you won that exchange. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's two choices there. You either pick it up, <laughs> you regret that you picked it up when you're back in the dugout. Yeah. Or just, now you know, I'm going to look at every every player that that actually picks up their own bat yeah. after they strike out. It's kind of a beta. Yeah. You, yeah. I mean, can't be a imagine boy. that. I would never do that. Well, it doesn't happen most times because, or I guess guys would probably do it on like a 3 2 count. This one wasn't. Uh, this was like 2 2 or like 1 2. So right. technically, like, it wasn't like a walk to where the bat would be on the ground. So, like, I know why he told me to pick it up. Right. Because, like, Three, two, like you thought you walked, you put your bat down or something. But I kind of went like this to the like the third third base umpire, and uh, somewhere on the like the bat kind of just like fell out of my hands. Mm-hmm. All right, I might have dropped it. He, but uh, do umps ever apologize to you? Are they ever like, "Yo, I fucked that up"? Yeah, not when they th- not when they throw you out. Usually, like if there's like a, you know, they punch you out or something on a on a ball that was ended up being a ball because they get a they get like a scorecard after every game that they do so they kind of see like the calls they missed or like you could you could strike out and be like hey man like i i don't really think i don't i don't think that was a strike like i had that wherever and most of them will be like hey let me know like you know i might have missed it and you like you appreciate those guys or like hey they'll tell you like the next day like hey man like i i messed that up i missed that one yeah you're like hey cool man like i, I appreciate it. we're all humans it's, it's a hard yeah. game you know the ball's moving 100 miles an hour they're trying to do their best, obviously. So when they miss one, like, hey, dude, you know, I, I messed that up. You're like, hey, it's, it's all good, dude. Like, no hard I like feelings. That. I like as long as there's no, like, yeah. animosity. They don't, they don't, like, target you for anything. It's yeah. Not, like, no, they're all – honestly, they're all really they're all really cool guys. Like, they're all kind of – you get to know a lot of them because, you know, especially the longer you play in the league, it's the same umpires every year. So um, you develop a relationship with these guys. And obviously you're cooler with some than others, but – I wouldn't say there's really any any guys that are too too bad of dudes. So yeah. do you not want robot umps? I don't want robot umps. No, because I think there's going to be a lot of unintended consequences with yes. that. Because like if you just have like a square that buzzes ball or strike, that you have a guy that sits up on one side of the plate, and then this dude yanks a hundred mile or fastball all the way across the other side of the plate with the catcher diving, and it nicks the box. Like mm-hmm. that's going to be that'll be a strike when on no time ever in baseball history is that going to be a strike you right. know? or pitchers will be able to find a way to like there's a lot of like curveballs or breaking balls that'll be like in the dirt that'll clip the bottom of the strike zone technically or yeah. like the ones that are at the top of the zone too so I think there'd be a lot of unintended consequences if it was just like the box they'd have to figure out a better way to do it yeah, yeah also, I don't want robot arms yeah. also I, what you were talking about earlier like you know these guys you know the umpires mm-hmm. I do think that there's something to be said for like the umpires are kind of good for the character of the game yeah it's part of the game it, do, it makes it feel like you know an actual thing that we're putting on here instead of some like sky judge overseeing everything mm-hmm. so and I, you get I like i agree with that and you get like maps as like a player like before the game like the you'll have like a hitters meeting every day before the game talking about whoever the the other team's starting pitcher is and then you know who the home plate umpire is going to be and like where there's a tendency for them to call more strikes opposed to other umpires or where they call less strikes. And then sometimes, you know, like if an umpire kind of lines up with like what a starting pitcher likes to do, you're like, yeah. oh shit, like this, this might not be good tonight. Yeah. If, if we don't have an actual umpire on the field, we need like a dummy that's dressed up as an umpire just for the managers to go out and scream, scream at when that, something yeah. doesn't go their way. Like they're not, what are they going to do? Go yell at a robot. I don't I, know. I, I need to see managers like getting right up into an umpire's face. You're going to dress up as an umpire and go out there? Yeah. I, I mean, I there, there actually, should be a decoy umpire. I, yeah. I'd go one further. I, it would be nice if it was just a, a like decoy umpire and it was just Lou Pinella every time. And he, just, he was just spitting on people that, and kicking and, uh, dirt. Like the, mm-hmm. the best, like one of the best like baseball highlights that there's ever been going around the internet was when uh, Terry Collins from the Mets got caught on the mic when, yeah. uh, when Syndergaard threw it Utley. And he just comes out there and he's just losing his Your mind. Your ass is yeah. in the jackpot. Yeah. yeah. And Tom Hallian's an awesome guy. Like, yeah. He's a great umpire. Uh, super good dude. And he yeah. was just like trying to defuse the situation. But fans just kind of see that on either TV or the stands. Like they think these two dudes are just going at it, saying super personal shit to each other. But most of the time it's just arguing and then one guy trying to calm the other guy down. 
yeah. and then uh, he kind of just like ran out of things to say. He yeah. Was, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. Like, You're asking you, the jackpot. Yeah. He's like, oh shit, like you agree with me. And yeah. So, Terry kind of like, I'm trying. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't know Terry, what to do. I'm trying out here. You got to <laughs> yeah. give me a chance. Yeah. But that's so good for the game, though, because like people, it, it's entertaining. It's, right. You know, at the end of the day, it's an entertainment business. So, like, hey, make make things that are entertaining. That's a fact. Like did it. you, last umpire question, did you get Joe West anything for his retirement? No, I didn't actually. I actually really like, I really liked Joe just because, and he was actually like a phenomenal umpire when he locked it in. Like, balls and strikes, he was one of the, he was one of the best guys in the league when it was like a, you know, a Sunday night game or um, playoff series. Like he, he was really, really good. Um, but yeah, he he was awesome. And like as a rookie, like he he would kind of like test you, like intentionally do something to like where you're like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> and see how you kind of reacted. And if you just like kind of took it, like okay, like this is just part of like getting your feet wet in the major leagues. Yeah, he would always like you. Yeah. But if you kind of like turned around and like showed him up. Like the, the pitcher could throw the next ball halfway up the backstop. <laughs> so it's gonna be it's gonna be strike three. Which and I always love Joe and um, I like all those umpires. And like side note, like kind of un, kind of get uncomfortable talking about it because it's such a integral part of your life. You don't want to ever like critique them or right. mm -hmm. have them think bad about you because like that's definitely not what it, you know I'm trying to do or want to do because like those guys are in it with us, man. We're all trying to do the best we can. And, yeah. Um, they're all really good dudes, and it's a really, really hard job at the end of the day, mm -hmm. even though I have been kicked out of uh, four or five games. Yeah. We're going to try and stop that. We're going to try and stop that. Nah, maybe like once a year. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. Can you give us a heads up? Like, let us know if there's a game that you – like probably against the Reds or some bullshit <laughs> yeah. team like that that you don't really care about playing against. Uh, you can just give us a heads up like, hey, Thursday, I'm going to get ejected. I get ejected. See, just let us know. It's never it's, – you know, I wish it was like a pre-planned thing or just like, nah, I want today off. Like first yeah. inning, I'm getting hucked. Yeah. Which my first ever ejection was a first inning ejection, and then Mattingly, he got thrown out as well. So you're like, oh, shit. Like I got thrown out, and I just got my manager thrown out in the first <laughs> inning. And, and then, then you have to sit with him? Then you have to sit with him. I sat with him in his <laughs> office, and we were up by five. And you're sitting in your manager's office. It was like the eighth inning. It was on the Marlins. We ended up blowing the lead in the eighth inning. It was like – Mattingly, me, president of the team, all in his office, watching the game oh. as we're blowing a lead. And you're just sitting there just like, fuck, dude. Like, that's just so <laughs> that's uncomfortable. Brutal. Like, you're just like, I, I hope we win, man. Oh. We, when you got, we, when you got traded home. from the Marlins, how long did it take you to learn all the new intricate handshakes in the clubhouse when you got to the Brewers? It changes every year. And honestly, I'm not, a, I'm not like a huge – I'm not a huge handshake guy. I, I need to like – that's always been a part of like my career where I needed to like step that up. I don't yeah. really have a ton of handshakes with guys. Every now and then, there's like three or four guys on the team like I might have something with. Yeah. But there's guys that have something with everybody. Like Bross over there, he's, he's got a handshake with everybody on the team, trainers, coaches, everybody. To and me, that would be so stressful. When you go like mid-season, you arrive on a team, now it's like, oh, shit, I got to relearn all that stuff in addition to everything else. You can always just do the like the DJ Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince one, which is the – Yep. Yeah, that one. That one. Something always plays. simple. Yeah, that one plays. Yeah, learn all your new teammates and coaches and everything. Midseason trade. I got yeah. lucky. It was offseason trade. That's what spring training's for. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's you got true. six yep. weeks to you know come up with something. <laughs> We're gonna get back to Christian Yelich in a second. Before we do, he's brought to you by Part of My Cheesesteak. Part of My Cheesesteak is a delivery and pickup only restaurant brand bringing you craveable cheesesteaks and loaded fries. Since launching in August. We're now live in 695 locations across 43 states with new locations added every single week. I like the Chipotle cheesesteak. That's my favorite. I like putting a little extra hot sauce on there, make it Billy style. You eat it, and then you complain about it for six hours. It's a great sandwich. I love, I, all kidding aside, the part of my cheesesteaks, they're awesome. I love them. I have one once a week. Actually, I secret shop our part of my cheesesteak once every couple weeks. I'll just order one mostly because I want a cheesesteak and just to make sure that the quality is still good. They're delicious. I love part of my cheesesteaks. You can get lunch, dinner, or late night delivery, and we're open seven days a week. The brownie bites are awesome too. Get the brownie bites. Uh, Hank, what's your favorite cheesesteak order? I like just the plain cheesesteak. I had a, a full cheesesteak and a half tonight. You delicious. had one, one and a half cheesesteak? Yeah, I had finished one. I was still hungry. I was like, give me more. Damn, you're going to be 210 in no time. I'm trying. Billy? I housed one today, and it was bomb. With the onions, love it. cheesesteak, it was absolute bomb. Jake, what's your favorite flavor of cheesesteak? Uh, I'm a plain guy. I also love the fries. Very crispy. They are good fries. Yeah. The fries travel well. The fries are really good, go to, yes. You can go to partofmycheesesteak.com. You can learn more. Order now on DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmates, or Grubhub. And now here's more Christian Yelich. Um, I saw a story 
Did you lose a home run derby to Barry Bonds? No. So the media, they love that one. Um, so what happened? Because this was obviously when Barry was the hitting coach for the Marlins. Yeah. It was a, it was a spring training thing. So we were just hitting, hitting uh, off a curveball machine on like one of the backfields after like the morning workout, getting ready for the game. And sometimes guys like to, to play games or like compete against each other. So you, you have something like where you're kind of like locked in instead of just like going through the motions with the drill, being like, ah, I'm like just going to take a few swings and whatever happens. So it was pretty unfair teams, actually. It was like me, Stanton, and Barry Bonds, and it was against uh, – <laughs> That's very I forgot unfair. who else. Yeah. But it was like Jeff Mathis, who's like one of my best friends in the game, but uh, him – whoever else was on the Marlins at the time, but it was like very lopsided teams. Yeah. It was like, you're just trying to score runs. So like, and I think Barry was the judge, whether it was a hit or not. So it was double singles. And then obviously home run scores, um, whatever, whatever points at the time it was. And he hit the most home runs during that drill actually still, uh, That's but crazy. it wasn't officially a home run derby. Well, it sounds but, like one, but, he did hit the most. He did swing and miss at the first curveball. We we're all laughing at him, like, "Oh, you don't got it anymore." And then the next pitch, the next like five, he hit a homer. We're like, oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe you still got it. But uh, there was like some media guys or beat writers, um, kind of off to the side, like watching the thing, and it kind of just like turned into like Barry Bonds wins like Marlins home run derby, which technically he did, but it wasn't a home run derby. And that I'm not saying that. Like... I'm not saying that he couldn't win a home run derby because he could, and the game looked super easy for him when he was playing and. He helped me tremendously when I was with the Marlins. He really helped me understand like hitting and how, how your body works and everything that goes into it. Yeah, we, we've always heard, because Barry is a pretty private guy when it comes to the media. There's some reporters, and I think this is like a baseball thing in particular, where some beat reporters, they get mad at people for like not giving them enough coverage or access or, or whatever the case might be. But Barry always seems like he's, I mean, he's obviously a legend. Mm -hmm. And when he was coaching you, can you tell us like what he's like as a person? Because I feel like I don't really know anything about Barry Bonds the person. He was he was really like funny and fun to be around as a as a hitting coach for us and he just he just understood like the game and hitting like different than really everybody else or had like really good awareness of like where his body was at or what he was trying to do and like accomplish because like anybody could anybody could hit a home run and not necessarily like understand how that happened like you it happens could, to you, me all the time like you could yeah you could hit a ball over the fence and you could like okay cool like that ball went over the fence it was a home run but like how did that happen? What did your body do to like allow that to happen like mechanically? And he was kind of able to break that down, explain it, show you, um, and kind of give you like thought processes to help you achieve what that with your body. Yeah. Which was cool. And, uh, you know, maybe you guys are going to need to bring him out of retirement Ooh. and enter a home run derby. If, uh, secret, if the day ever yeah, comes where I'm sick. fortunate enough to, to compete in one and, and be healthy. To I would, that would be, how much money would you pay to not have to eat my ass? <sighs> At whatever Barry wants. Yeah. And he can p pretty much pick his just number. Just blank, destroyer. blank check. Maybe we yeah. should throw that into, okay. <clears throat> so if you win the home run derby, we obviously have to eat your ass, but within, or we have to eat each other's ass. Yeah. I almost had to eat your ass yeah. there. But if we can if we can get Barry Bonds to compete against you within six months of you winning the home run derby and he beats you, we're out. I mean, it seems pretty fair. I would yeah, think. Right? I don't know how we're gonna have to it's gonna be like Celtic. Crime. I don't even we're think like I think Barry like if Bonds. you guys mm -hmm. I think if you guys like started a campaign to like fund payment to Barry Bonds. Like, I honestly don't know if people would donate to that because I kind of think they want to see him pay up on yeah, this bet, which probably just like some sadistic bet, you yeah. know, but it's... Uh, what it's, we're going to end up doing, and this is just the God's honest truth, we're going to be like, if we eat each other's ass, part of my takes over forever. So you guys can vote. And then people will mm -hmm. vote, and we won't eat each other's ass. <laughs> it's a good chance that the show sticks around. I think, <laughs> yeah. I think that might be your that might be your one out. It will, ju it will just be... You know what it is? Is if we have to end up doing this... It's more like the random silences. Yeah. Like when we're just sitting in a room together, it's like. We'd always know. Yeah. Like, uh, it's so, like I know what yeah. your butthole tastes yeah, like. like. What, what's up, dude? That's not oh, something yeah. that you could, that doesn't wash away. <laughs> it's your deepest, darkest secrets. Yeah. It's something that at the end yeah. of the day, like you're alone with yourself. Somebody, yeah. with that. somebody said the other day, like your obituary will be written. It'll be uh, the best thing that you've ever, or no, it'll be the worst thing that you've ever done followed by the best thing that you've ever done. And in this case, like when I die, my obituary would be like, yeah. ate Dan Katz's asshole one yeah. time. 
delicious. It'd be, and then it'd, be del- a tough, it'd be a tough scene. Yeah. yeah it'd be a tough scene. <laughs> but honestly, it's weird for me. Like, that, that my association with you guys in this show is, like, synonymous with that. Yes, yeah. Because yes. there's, like... It's once a day at least. Like I'll be walking down the street and somebody's like, "You gotta do the home run derby, bro." <laughs> Big Cat PFT, we gotta get them to pay up. Like, I, every day during it happens every day during baseball season. Like at yeah. the stadium, I get yelled at every day at the stadium with that. And then walking down the street, like it happened yesterday at, at uh, Waste Management, just like yeah, walking yeah. around, like, "Dude, you gotta do PFT. You gotta do PMT, PFT, and Big Cat. Yeah. Gotta make them pay up. We need you back in the derby." I'm like, well, "Oh my god!" The same would happen to me when you had that insane season. I every time you had a home run, I'd get tagged in like a hundred mm-hmm. tweets. Yeah, yeah. Twitter's just blowing He's hot. up. He's hot. Yeah, it was All bad. Right, I get it. I get it. I'm what when you're playing the Cubs, I'm watching it, and like they're just like, "Look, you had another home run." It would have been a great day in Barstool history that home run derby. Whether I wondered or yeah. not, it would have been it would have been an electric yeah, we hour ready. for you guys. Yeah, we were ready Major, for a live stream. I know. Major League I, I Baseball feel so been, bad about that. Like that was a big part of the disappointment and not doing that derby, which I don't think a lot of people knew. I was just like, yeah, I wanted, obviously want to do the home run derby because it'd be cool to compete in it. But I think just I think, that moment is just like, you just can't replicate, you know, what's it, on the line there. It, and if I remember correctly, I think you texted me like a week before being like, I think I hurt my back. And I was like, he's fucking with us. Like, yeah. He's fucking it was with a us. few days before. Yeah. Cause uh, yeah, I was hitting and playing and like, I, uh, I had some back stuff. I've, I feel like I've, hopefully gotten a handle on that the last the last two years but when it kind of when it goes like you just know like oh shit like the next next 10 days to two weeks like i'm i'm fucked yeah mm-hmm. and i actually played in that i played in the game like the next day but i was still like not not feeling very good i played like two innings and left just because i was i was starting the game i was getting a hit lead off like there's you're probably never going to get a lead off an all-star game ever again in your, right. in your life. Cause you have to be the visiting team. You have to be a starter. You have to be the lead off hitter. So like, I wanted to do that, like start an all-star yeah, game cool. and do that. So I was like, I'm just going to go, I'm going to go out there and like, you know, Verlander starting the game for the American league and I, I get a lead off for the national league. So it's something that's really cool. I probably shouldn't have been out there even for the game, but, uh, what did you, what did you, did you strike out? Uh, I think I, I got jammed super bad and like a soft line drive to the, to the first base, which is fine. Yeah, contact. Counts. And then the next at bat, I just I didn't swing and struck out, and then I was out of the game, <laughs> and then just went home. Yeah. yeah, Major League Baseball was probably pretty happy that you didn't compete because then they would have had to answer so many questions about like why is Christian Yelich like blowing up online? Yeah, right why now? is it trending? Why is yeah? Why is for this, a week straight? Yeah, a big sideshow. Yeah. yeah, it would have been <laughs> would have been bad for baseball, bad for the game. I uh, know. Although the publicity, it, it'd be good for the game. It would it yeah, would draw would a lot it? of eyes to it. Maybe not necessarily you know the topic that's being discussed. Maybe they wouldn't be too proud of, but. You know, Any buzz a, is good buzz, I guess. Yeah. yeah, it'd reach a large audience. Yeah. Can you settle a debate for us? Because we've been going back and forth, back and forth since the World Series on this one. Uh, if a team gets no hit, but it's a combination no hitter, mm-hmm. did they still is that a, did they get no hit? Yeah, I feel like you don't feel as bad. Like if you're on the other team, you're mm-hmm. just like, yeah, I guess it just like wasn't our day. We didn't we didn't get any hits today. Yeah. But if it's like one guy that no hits you, I think you're just like a little more. You're a little more pissed off if you're on the other team when like one guy no hits you as opposed to like combined no hitter. But anytime you lose like a World Series game, whether you got no hit or you scored ten runs and lost by one, like you're still gonna be a <laughs> loss. A loss is a loss. But it's a no. It, it is a no hitter because they got no hits. Yeah, I mean you're gonna be in history. You're yeah. gonna be in the history books as a no hitter. It's a no hitter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We just want to clarify for Max. He's Max a is a fan. Phillies fan, and he just adamantly is like, it wasn't a no hitter. It's like, well, did you get any hits? He's like, no. Said. <laughs> 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 he's still doing it. Yeah, he's still cheers. trying. I don't know if I've I've been on a few teams that have been no hit. I don't think we've ever had a. I don't know if anybody's combined no hitter. Does. When it, when it's happening, are you guys in the dugout? Like you feel it coming. Yeah. Yeah. It's like once a once like the sixth inning rolls around, seventh inning rolls around. You're just like, hey, like somebody should probably get a hit right here. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna need, we're gonna need somebody to get a hit. Like <laughs> it doesn't even matter if we lose. It's just like, hey. it's Somebody get a fucking hit, please. <laughs> I don't care who it is. Like, yeah. you know, back in the day, like, it could be the pitcher. We don't care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you feel it coming, especially if the guy's, like, on a roll. Like, if you've seen the guy a few times and you're like, oh, yeah, like, this guy's got pretty good shit today. Yeah. We about might bunting? be in trouble. Yeah. yeah. Are you in favor of bunting to break up a no-hitter? No. I mean, if it's, if it's, like, the first couple innings still, like, maybe. If it's, like, a 0-0, one nothing game. But if it's, like, seventh, seventh eighth inning – I don't know. Maybe like in the World Series though, that that's a that's a topic. Like, yeah. If yeah. it's one nothing yeah, in the World Series, 
Like, I feel like you kind of have to in like a World Series playoff game. Yeah, I, I'd say even if it's the ninth inning in the World Series, if it's a yeah. one nothing or two nothing game, yeah, bunt. it's the World yeah. Series. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, it's when it's like ten nothing and a guy's bunting. It's right. like, what are you doing? Right. Then it's like, hey man, like you gotta out of respect to the other guy like that you're competing against in the major leagues like hey get like a get a real hit yeah, yeah. You know? not that a bunt's not a real hit but in that situation yeah so off that what's your favorite unwritten rule of baseball unwritten rule of baseball i feel like a lot of them are gone now yeah most of them i mean that one's still or that one's still around yep. for sure my favorite um, is just if you if if the team drills your best player you got to drill the other guys the other team's best player yeah, I mean, what what's kind of behind that is of like if you are the other team's best player and you see the other team just getting smoked all the time, when you go up to the plate, like it is still in the back of your head sometimes. You're like, yeah. like shit, I could be eating one right here. Yeah. And like the first pitch of the at bat, you kind of like sometimes you just kind of feel it out. Like all right, like let's see where this goes. Yeah, right. Like if the guy throws it close to the zone or the strike. Like okay, I guess I'm not getting hit right here. Or mm -hmm. There are times where it's like it goes behind you, at, you know, 97 miles an hour. So then the next pitch, you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. Here we go. It would be nice if they just like when they do that, just not throw it that fast. Just kind of lob it up and just let it let you just take it. The gentleman's doing yeah, it. Gentleman's, yeah. Yeah. And it's never the guy like the, if that ever does happen, it's like never the guy that's throwing like 90. Yeah. It's always mm -hmm. the guy that's throwing 100 miles an hour, 98 miles an hour. And you're just like, damn, this that's got to hurt. This is oh. going to suck. Is it? It sucks. It, it, it sucks. has to really suck. Yeah. And then you got to like pretend like it doesn't suck. <laughs> yeah. But the whole, the whole down down to first base, you're just like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> like, I, can't, I can't feel my arm. I can't feel my leg. Like <laughs> something, it just, this sucks. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, you get the first base and like, hey, you all right, dude? You're just like, no, I'm not all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I can't feel my entire arm right now. <laughs> like, oh man, that sucks. Yeah. Like, yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Or when it's like on accident, I was like the... Happened to me one time. Um, it was like a day game. I think it was in Cincinnati. It was like a one of those like eleven thirty or noon start times, and I I think it was uh, Luis Castillo was was starting for the Reds, and I was I think I might have been leading off for the Brewers that time at that time, and uh, it was like, hey guys, happy Fourth of July. How's it? You guys have a good one. You know, it's gonna be a hot one today. Um, you know, talk to the catcher, the umpire. Like everybody have a good game. And I was like, all right, cool, cool. It's like first pitch was like 98 off the uh, off the ankle. Oh, I was just like, God, this sucks. It's like <laughs> he's like, my bad. It's like, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we we played together in Miami a little bit. Like he's an awesome guy. Like Luis is a, Luis is a great dude. But uh, it's just a really tough day, way to start your noon game. You know, yeah. after after a night game, day game, noon game, Fourth of July, hundred degrees in Cincinnati, just. Mm -hmm. 98 off oh. the ankle to start the to start the day it's Jeez. like yeah. that's tough it's not that, gonna be our day today i don't think yeah uh this isn't so much a question as it is just a topic for you to elaborate on and expound on do you remember the 2019 postseason yeah it was quick yeah what happened what happened there I uh i was watching that one from the from the bench and it uh didn't go the the brewer's way there. Yeah, that was uh, you guys had a one game playoff against who was it? I, I can't remember. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, just, I, I don't know who we were. I don't know who we were playing. It's always the Nationals. No, right? I don't know. I don't know if it was. You the guys Nationals. were. You guys were. We we crushed you that game, right? It was a blowout. Yeah. No. I wasn't no. You guys were up. A, you guys were up late, right? Uh, potentially, that yeah. might have been oh, something that man. might have been like a four out window there that changed like baseball. The changed course baseball of like baseball history. history. Yeah. 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 I you, can't remember entirely who we were playing, but. <laughs> It was a that was a tough night. Yeah, are you are you like us as fans and you go back like I I'll look at um, the roster from that 2019 mm -hmm. Washington Nationals team and I'll just like look at it and just fantasize and be like, damn, that was a good team. I was like, a, look it was at a really really good there. team. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you think is is the best team that's ever been assembled? Oh, I mean, some of like the recent Dodger teams probably could have uh, given anybody a run for their money, even though like. You know, they won in 2020, but um, I think some of the ones they had, like, 21, 22, were, like, really, really talented. Um, Anytime a team yeah. wins over, like, 105, it's, like, whoa. It's so hard to do. Like, yeah, you, have like to be, you have to be so good, like, top to bottom to win 100 games plus. Um, I think some of those Yankees teams from back in the day were just really, really, really good. Everyone always likes to say, like, 98 Yankees is yeah. Yeah. the best team. yeah. They but were, I remember us, like, we played that Nationals team in the regular season. Like, this is a really, really talented team. Like, they get in the postseason. Like, 
it's gonna be a problem. And like that's when you're playing really good teams like that, you want to play them like a one game playoff. Cause anything can happen in a game. Like you can beat anybody. In, uh, the worst team in baseball could beat the best team in baseball in one game. Right. Um, yeah, that one sucks, dude. Like anytime you lose in the playoffs, especially like that, because both clubhouses are like prepped for like all the the champagne stuff. Yeah. So like when you lose oh. those games, because we've been in, we've lost game sevens, we lost that wild card. So when you lose those games, like all the celebration shits just like laying there and oh, you just like, no. you just like walk right by it into like a silent locker room. And just like, <laughs> everybody's just super bummed out because your season's over and like anything can happen in the postseason. Like you have a chance to win a world series. So that's yeah. brutal. It's a, it's a depressing atmosphere after yeah. those games, especially yeah. like that. Like it happened so quick. Like that was the bottom of the eighth inning. Yeah. We lost three outs happened in like the next five minutes and like the game was over. And we went from like winning mm -hmm. to five minutes later, like yeah. seasons over. Game over. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Which, all right, it's, go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say, is it is it possible to drink a sad bottle of champagne? I haven't. Like seen, I haven't you're seen it done. You're walking to the clubhouse and there's booze there. You're you're upset. You just like they, no. They like take it all out and they bring it to the other side. There's oh, not, really? There's nothing even sitting there. But what's sitting there is like the the t-shirt and like the goggles like oh. that you see everything the hat like everybody's in. So like when you win those games and you do like the the champagne thing like usually. Um, like the guys that run the clubhouse are sitting there. They have like all the stuff lined up. You give them like the game hat and like you put your, your cleats in like a, like sections and then they hand you like all the celebration stuff. So you put all that on whoever's doing like the on-field interviews, like they wrap that up. The manager gives a speech and then that's when you see like on TV, everybody like popping the champagne. So when you lose all that stuff's still laying there, you just walk right by it. Oh. There's no champagne because they took it to the other locker room because they're going to be the ones that need it. Damn. Yeah. That's brutal. Um, all right, so I have one last question. Uh, it's a rowback question. R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. Use promo code TAKE, 20% off. Joggers, Q-zips, polos, everything, hoodies, uh, the best stuff out there. Without naming names, what position group is the biggest group of psychos in baseball? Oh. Um, that's a good – I think – there's different tiers of it. So like all your position players, the guys that play like every day, they're like their own brand of psycho. Okay. You have the, the relievers. Those guys are pretty crazy actually. Cause they'll like, it'll be like 10 30 at night and they're like slamming a red bull with P four and a five hour energy to go close at the game. Like dude, right. you're not going to sleep till like 6am if you do that. Yeah. So those guys are coming in. I've seen guys that take like the red hot stuff. Like, you guys ever had that? Like, where yeah, you yeah. put on like, your body feels like it's on fire. Like yeah. I play with a guy that used to put that up his nose in the, in the bullpen <sighs> before he came awesome. in the game and he threw like a hundred miles an hour. Like That's you know, badass. God, that guy's on our side. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, you just have like starting pitchers all kind of have their quirks. Like I think just being in the game of baseball, you're kind of like your own brand of psycho. I always thought it would be catchers. I mean, like the, it feels like, yeah, I, they're like crazy. goalies are psycho yeah. and hockey and catchers feel the same way where it's like, who would want to, crouch for three hours every day yeah just stopping like projectiles yeah, yeah. right <laughs> getting yeah. hit with bats and foul tips and yeah. all kinds of things like yeah i'm like yeah, you guys are crazy I, yeah know, like i wouldn't want to do that yeah like you go out and you could go multiple innings in a row where you just never see the ball i've gone whole games where like i didn't do anything besides stand out there that there's like one or two of them a year where uh are those fun Kinda. Yeah. We had one game. I think we had a game with the Brewers last year where there was not one outfielder that caught a fly ball. Holy shit. It was all ground balls and strikeouts. That's so That's fun. Awesome. Yeah. I, would, I would love playing you're just, that You're game. just sitting out there. Like, he went and just, like, hung out in left field for an entire major league game. Like, yeah. anybody in the stands could have done did what you did yeah. that day in left field. <laughs> like, but anybody. you're also, like, repositioning yourself depending on who's at bat. So, you're, like, you're walking around. Yeah, you're walking. Well, you have, like, a card that tells you, like, where to stand. <laughs> yeah. So, like, before every game, they give you, like, a whatever team starting lineup is. Like, they have, like, the analytics card that they give to you. Yeah. And so, depending on if it's, like, a right-handed or left-handed pitcher, it tells you, like, basically where you're supposed to stand. So you just walk to where it says. You and just stand just there. Walk back the next batter, you walk to where that tells you. So you're just kind of like, we just went for a walk for See, three fun hours. Fun day at the ballpark. Yeah. Yeah. It was a great day. Yeah. Just looked around, took a couple at bats, hung out, took in the scene, and went home. went home. Yeah. Oh, I, I have one last, last question. The uh, slide that you have yeah. in Milwaukee. Like two reporters broke ribs and, oh, yeah. and, and wrists and legs and People shit. People get hurt on, on that every year. Why is that so? Why, you, why does it you exist? Go down, you do go down fast. I guess Bern, Bernie obviously goes down all the time. I've only been down at one. I went down at one time actually last year and you come off that thing hot. Yeah. I didn't think you did. There's like a whole, there's like a whole pad set up at the bottom of it. And you're just like, it looks like a normal regular, like little slide and you're, you're hauling ass down that thing. And so it, 
I asked our trainer, he's like, yeah, dude, every, every year I get like two or three calls from like the other side where they have somebody that needs to go to the x-ray room <laughs> from, yeah. from the slide. And, uh, yeah, it was a Dodgers reporter. He like broke his, uh, yeah. broke his wrist and hand in a bunch of different places. All time. Pretty, pretty yeah, gnarly. Like he, he did the game with the, yeah, uh, with the back. cast. He had the cast <laughs> yeah. on. Uh, ruled. Still played the, he still played the game. Though. He did. Yeah. He did. Um, all right. Well, Christian, this has been awesome. Great catching up, man. And, uh, I'm not gonna say best of luck because you're in the Cubs division, but you know, opening, also, day, opening day, we play those guys. In Opening. Chicago or Milwaukee? In Probably Chicago. Milwaukee. Oh, really? Yeah, so I'll get food. And yeah, and it will be like. Have to wear it for three hours out there. Yeah. <laughs> and people, you know, don't say mean things to Christian. Wink, wink. Uh, they won't listen to you, I promise. Yeah, yeah. No, no, <laughs> don't, don't be mean to them. Don't say mean things to them. Don't tell them, say, hey, I saw you on that porno when you were eat, eating that ass. Don't do any of that. Do not. They would never do such a never. thing out there, especially in the bleachers on opening no, day in no, Wrigley no, Field. No, no. No such thing no like that such would happen. Thing. Please don't. Um, all right, man. Thanks so much. You got it. Always a pleasure, guys. Christian Yelich was brought to you by Omega Accounting Solutions. Attention, small business owners. You might be eligible to receive up to $26,000 per employee through the employee retention credit. You are a responsible business owner who continued to pay taxes and employee staff during the pandemic. You can recover the payroll taxes that you overpaid as a refund of up to $26,000 per employee. Omega Accounting Solutions helps get back the money you deserve through the CARES Act. All it takes is a quick, easy, and free 10-minute consultation to determine if you qualify. That's simple. Just check it out. You might qualify. That's free money if you do. It's a free 10-minute consultation. Determine if you're entitled to that money. Omega is the small business champion with teams dedicated to maximizing tax credits. CPAs even turn to Omega for ERC guidance. Don't miss out on your small business tax credit, even if you got the PPP loan. There's still time to find out if you qualify and file your claim. Call 855-505-DAVE. That's 855-505-DAVE. Or visit omegataxcredits.com slash barstool sports now. Find out if you're entitled to that $26,000 per employee credit coming back at you. 855-505-DAVE. Okay. Time to wrap up. I've had a bad sports weekend and someone offered up the thought what if hank gets the lottery ball and i was like don't ever say that a uh, good news though it's not gonna happen it's never gonna happen also the conspiracy theorists out there who was like i saw one person said if hank ever gets it they're just gonna delete the tapes because it's good for content hank would actually murder us like he would kill us you would you would quit the show yeah, you guys. I could delete tapes. Billy can delete tapes. You guys won't even know. <laughs> I, how I don't to know do how that. to delete. Yeah. He's tape. an expert at I that. I do not know how to delete. Uh, tape. If Hank, if you, if you get it right, then I mean, what people don't realize is that Hank's life has become a never-ending series of people coming up to him and whispering numbers into his ear. Yeah. Because as Hank is very, very much looking forward to turning the page on this. It's All right, so let's happen. do it. It's let's never going to happen. Have you ever gotten it? Let's get out of the way. Have you ever gotten it? No. Yeah, it's never going to happen. Let me go 99. I haven't said, I haven't said numbers yet. That's, oh, false that's false start. That's false start. Okay. False start. So what does that mean? That means you have to wait now to pick last. I'm last. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Number 69. 69. Who had it? Check the tape. Check the tape. I'll give it to you. I'll okay, give it to okay. you. Billy, do you have any comment about last week when you told everybody to check the tapes and I clearly beat you on the tapes? You also were saying that when you were losing beer competitions. It's also oh, were yeah. videoed and you could see that you <laughs> yeah. lost. Well, the yeah, thing you is, when that. you're chugging the beer, you can't see when the other person finishes. Right, so when you finish, you're like, no way, I lost that. Because I was – well, the thing is, the first night, the heavy hitters showed out, uh, and then I was getting caught with some IPAs, which just aren't fun to chug. I'm not chugging IPAs. Oh, you're going to get fact check. fucking – Check, Billy tried getting a uh, beer snake onto the broadcast, and I was calling it, it was unsuccessful. <laughs> it was successful. It just went down really badly. Ah, it, it, mm. it was. It, we couldn't try it sounds again. Like it was unsuccessful. It sounds like no, 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 got, it got into <laughs> yeah. the yeah, video camera, exactly like it. Um, and then it just went coming crashed down on all the people around us, and it was just really bad vibes okay. from some parents. All right, so you have si you have sixty nine. Um, Hank, let's go ninety nine. I'll go seventeen. Bitch, eighteen. Remember, three is out, and I think forty five is out. My son picks six, four. Forty five might come back in. I'm gonna go fifty five. Oh man, I'm actually rooting for twenty to be a kid, because Max being an almost winner would be just so fucking funny. Yeah. Wow. He needs the money too. He does. He need. He did he pay you? Well, let's just, thing. let's just say 
Max paid me half, and I was like, oh, great. He's just, you know, Venmo restrictions. you got to pay me the other half tomorrow. We're on, like, day six of Ooh. tomorrow. He's been on vacation, though. He has. UCLA won today on the road at Colorado. Yeah, so that yeah. price is going down. UCLA, yeah. the, it, it, so when I put my future in, it was plus 1,400. Now they're down to plus 1,200. Yeah. And they're going to be a one seed probably, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, they're in good, in good shape, yeah. I like UCLA. I'm like going to have UCLA, I have Tennessee, UConn, and then I'm going to have a mystery team that it, it is your team if you're listening right now, but you don't know what team it is. But it is your team. Sprinkle, yeah, you. Sp- I'm talking to you sprinkle, right now. JMU. No, no, it's it's your team. The people who are listening right now, yeah, I bet on your team. Nice. So I'm rooting for your team, but it's a mystery team. 18, 18. You've never gotten this? Hey, this would be an all-time fuck-up PFT if you fall started and you got it. I know. I would take credit for it. Oh, 55. Oh! Yeah! You got it? Oh, yeah! Go. Pay the man his That's money! So wow! Easy. Pay the man his money! Oh, See my God! Wow. Oh, Hank! And Hank took easy. my number! Oh, easy! Man! What'd you, what'd you just make? Like, 3K? Oh, did oh you, man! Did you pay this week? Oh, uh, no. What's crazy is that... Wait. No, no, that dollar bill has been there for three weeks. That's not his dollar bill. That counts as being paid. No, that twenty dollars has been there for three weeks. I know because I thought it was one of your guys. I didn't take it. You know what's wild is that I said ninety nine, and then I all started, and then Hank was like, "Ooh, I'm gonna take his number." So thank you, Hank. Thanks for the assist. Also, I'm pretty sure Hank said it's been a trend of double numbers. How much money is in here? There has to be so much money in here. Oh man. Oh my God, PFT! You I don't even know if that's accurate. So like, much third money. time, third time. That's probably like four grand in here. Whoa! Oh, good for you. Wow. Hey, thanks, Jake. Yeah. Hey, cool. you could have, if you had just not taken PFT's number, it could have been you. You know what? Here, let me see. Let me see that money. Well, I, I don't have the key. Oh, who's got the key? <laughs> I think Memes does. We might not ever be seeing that money. I feel like. No, we're gonna get it out. Oh no, I, Memes. Remember, I gave you the key. Memes got the key. Damn, Hank, that was so close. Mm-hmm. Except not really. What, what was your other pick going to be? Fifty five. You're going to put it on Jam. You were you going to pick fifty five? I might. No. Yeah, yeah I think you. Were, I think he was going to pick fifty five. Seventeen. You know what, oh, hey, Jake? Damn. Since you were the first to congratulate me and you were very sincere about it, I want you to have this money that was outside. Of the oh, safe. that's nice. So here you go, Jake. That's nice. It's, oh, it's here a win. We got what is that? C- a, congratulations, a champagne. Oh, wow. We got. A, we have this a champagne. Is, uh, now Hank has to put. You have to put more money in here, right? A little Veuve Clicquot. So you owe more money in here, Hank? Oh, no, you have to double it, right? I don't want to take it. It's your winnings. Jake, don't double Jake, sportsmanship. Jake, yeah, I have to double it. Jake, take it and just... You have to double what's ever no, in, just take what's it in here? Just take it and give it to Billy. If you don't want it. Don't give it to Billy. Do not give there it to Billy. There you go, Jake. Oh, my God. <laughs> should I, Come should, on, Jake. You don't want it. Should I pop this right now? Oh, Hank, can you open this up for me? Billy, no. Jake, you don't want it, Avert your eyes, Billy. This is so much Oh, my God. It's the blue. It's so much cash. It's the blue cash. I'm going to count you out like I'm a bank teller. Wow. That's the blue cash. Yeah, wow, this sucks. How many seconds of the episode is that okay. in payment? One, two, two three, four, uh, it's three, it's five, three dick jokes. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's a thousand. Wow. If there's insufficient funds, we just do the math. How many weeks times how many people, right? 13, 14, don't, I don't need to nickel 15, and dime you guys. I've won 16, it before. It's not that big of a deal for me. Wow. 17... Hank, 18, 18 like grand. Honors? Wait, watch out. 18 grand in there. $18,000? Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's, I'm happy for you, BFT. Thanks. You deserve it. Thanks, Big Cat. After this you makes just up, said you needed to win something. Th- this almost All your teams stink. That's look true. At that. yeah. This almost makes me whole for the doink, almost. Yeah. There you go. And Hank, you have to double that? Hank, or where does that work? Are you going to put it in here? Do you put it in here? What do you do? BFT is money. So you're going to pay me $1,800? Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm. Oh! oh! Congratulations, <laughs> BFT. What a moment. The rich oh, get true richer. where were you? Wow. Oh, it tastes so good. Oh. Go. Pass this to Hank. I'm good. That's great. Good. You want a sip? You want I'm a quick good. sip? No, thanks. Hank's doing the thing where he's watching like Stefan Diggs. Yeah. Like, I'll remember also, this. Also, glad you were drinking champagne after a victory. Oh, man. <laughs> good Learning point. lesson from Max's. Good point. Oh, uh, yeah. Billy, this does mean we all have to put $20 more into mm. this. Today, right, right? Yeah, today. how sweet it is. Here you go, but yeah. have oh, some champagne. Have some. You've won. Yeah, why not? I, I think the tradition should be all the winners <laughs> oh, I get love to it. celebrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy. Oh, all the you've winners. won. Everyone who's gotten it should be drinking champagne right now. Wow. Mm. 
What time does Jake uh, take a swig real quick? What time does the Hustle Club close? Mm. Now, Jake, pass it to Hank because you've won it, right? Nope. Memes oh, is no. But Memes only guesses like Memes guessed like four times. Memes has won it, right? No, he hasn't. Oh, oh should I should I call Max oh, Soma? Yeah, Max yeah, has won yeah, too. yeah. Oh yeah, Matt. Yeah, I'll call. Yeah, I'll, call him. Give a virtual. I'll call our our other Max here if you want to give them okay. a virtual. Yeah, let's call both Maxes. Champagne. This is fucking great. Or let's call the Barry's at and order him a glass of champagne. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell Max if Hank wanted, and then he'd be like, "No fucking way." This is so much fun. Hey. What do we got? Hank. Hank won the lottery ball. No, he didn't. Yeah, no, he didn't. <laughs> PFD did though, so we're drinking <laughs> champagne. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so so we we had everyone in the in the studio who's won it gets to drink champagne. So I wanted to call you because you would be drinking champagne with us. I may need to, I may need to get a glass of champagne. Yeah, you should. Yeah, send it to the group text. Send us a picture of you drinking champagne as a lottery ball winner. Okay. All right. Awesome. All right. See ya. Oh man, that's great. That's crazy great. crazy I'm happy. take, but Coors Light tastes way better than champagne. That's not that crazy. Agreed. Coors Light's the best beer ever. Let's see if he's gonna pick up. He's probably in the West Coast, right? Yeah. Make sure he drinks some champagne too. And anyone at home who's won it, please raise a glass of champagne. Hey Max, what's up? What's up, dude? Hey, I wanted to let you know um that I got I got the lottery ball correct. Yeah on, on my take tonight. Yeah, and so we're passing around champagne. Everyone that's gotten it is taking a sip of champagne. So I wanted to let you know that as a past winner of the lottery yeah. ball, you should have Drink a Drink some of champagne, Max. Have Drink some champagne. Look, we got champagne. Wait, can I get a, a look at Hank not getting any champagne? Yeah, no, yeah, he didn't get to drink any champagne. Oh, he didn't get to drink any <laughs> Oh, wait, Max, <laughs> Max. Hank. Max, you know what the best part is? PFT went off sides on the picks, so you can't say your number until I say numbers. So he said it too early. He said 99, and then Hank decided to take PFT's number. So PFT went to a secondary number. That number won. Ah, oh, how brutal. sweet it is! How sweet it is! I got that. I got that live money, Max. Oh yes. Hell yeah. Hey. Hell yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. All right, have some shit, Hank. Uh, yeah, have some shit, Hey, you're the best, PFT. Hank, you stink. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> All right, love you, Max. And that's coming from a loser. Yeah, Max is a Bye. loser. He choked. <laughs> In the Genesis. People yeah, he don't fucking forget. did. Yeah, yeah no, no. Yeah, yo, stop now you it. agree with stop me? Stop it. Yeah. Stop yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Hank. Now no. you agree with me? Max is good. He's good people. Um, Hank, any comments about what is taking place here? I was actually texting Max uh, on Friday and was like, you don't actually consider that a win, right? And he was, he said, no. He said, if, you know, if your friends asked me, I'd say yes. If my friends asked me, I'd say no. And then we were talking about how I told him I just need to win it and win the money. Oh, oh, but I won the money. And that didn't happen. You didn't win the money. Uh, memes, can we make well, sure we get another bottle of champagne for whoever wins it next? Because this, it will it will happen again. It won't be Hank. It's, this cash shout smells out fantastic. Eli Manning. Yeah, shout out to Eli you, Manning. If you, you guys, can buy me that uh, the Arizona merch you never bought me. Oh. Oh. Now we're getting in a bed off. I asked you if you wanted me to buy you the merch, and you said forget about it. Oh. No, no. no. Oh, you, we walked past we the store in the real. airport, and you are like, you want it here? I was like, no. We gotta stand if on. you guys Walking wanted by, like, to air the Homa interview before that yeah. episode, it would have come naturally. Yeah, right. It did come naturally. It no, counts. It um, Either way, give Hank a little sip of champagne. No, come on, hey, give him no, some champagne. No, no. Give him some champagne. Here's $100, champagne. Hey, I don't want it. I don't want it. Give him some. It. Take a little sip. It. Hank, you want $100? I'm sober. It's good. I'm 24 it's hours good. sober. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Come on. This is fucked up. All right, so we could we could, we could keep this show going for 24 more hours. You want $100? Take it. There you go. Take it. There you go. Oh wow! You actually gave it. Yeah, there's a hundred dollars. I'll be needing that eighteen hundred dollars back from you. Um, PFT. Can I, have $100? I actually. Yeah. <laughs> Big guy, you want a hundred dollars? Yeah. yeah. S Billy, you you know what? You Memes, have my hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. Here you go. <laughs> Psych. <laughs> no, seriously. Scout, Scout's honor. I owe you forty bucks. Here you go. There Thank you, Billy. Take that, that hundred bucks. Memes, you want a hundred bucks? Yeah, get memes. Get me memes. Two hundred bucks. Two hundred. <laughs> I'll match memes. Yeah, two hundred. Here's two hundred memes. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, oh like, man, this is fun. This is Christmas. Okay. Yeah. Um. Wow. What an ending to the show. That was great. That I was just want to see what the next poll will be. It doesn't count. Okay. I just want to see. I want to see. Wait, do you have any cheesesteaks left? I hope it's ninety nine. Imagine if it was ninety nine. Imagine if it was ninety nine. Ah. Oh. 99.
Wait, what is that? Egg is so dead inside. Oh, it's 80. <laughs> oh, man, you're I, such a loser. I love this You'll show. You'll never get it. I'm so happy. <laughs> this is the only win I've had all weekend. It's just watching you lose. <sighs> God damn it, does it feel good? We can have our graphics guy, Shane, make a banner for how many times? I, I'm i four. You guys, you're I think, three. I think that's three for me. Yeah. You're, had, you're one or two. two. and I had that one where I went back to back, but that was on short porch. Was the Official member? part of my take yeah, yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a hell really, of a what day. are you, five? Yeah. Hank, imagine that. I didn't so, even try so to get two in a row. The max is one. In a row. Look how mad Hank is. And you haven't even gotten one. Officially? Uh, no, but oh, okay. listen. All right, yeah, no, oh, okay, but you haven't even got one practice. I see you. Every morning I come in, little behind the scenes, I get in around 8.30. Hank is in here just pressing the lottery ball machine, guessing numbers, and he still hasn't gotten it. The guy's practicing, and he still hasn't gotten it. Uh, All right. What a fun show. Hank? Nothing matters. I mean, no, I don't No, I, no I, nothing matters? I don't care anymore. Okay. This is right. stupid. Love you guys. <laughs> All woolly mammoths have won the lottery ball this machine the same amount as Hank. <laughs> I actually, I had that plan. Yes! It, it's written down yes! on my notes that that was planned. That's a fact. 